coming in, not going backwards. Yeah, which means they both have that fighting mentality. They both showed up to fight. They meet in the center of the Trigon and swing immediately. <laughs> it is all over, just like that. It's a beautiful thing to see this level of spirit. Here we go. BYB's mighty Trigon has traveled like never before. History made in Dubai. A triumphant return to London. And tonight, the smaller service in combat sports is back home in South Florida. The super middleweight Police Gazette Diamond Belt as BYB, The Rock, D Smash Nelson, fights another BKB world champion. Birmingham, England's James Conley. First time in BYB history, we will crown a featherweight world champion. The Puck Guy, Brandon Slaughterhouse Burr, needs to bring the thunder for his title fight with Harold McQueen. And it's Brasilia against Riverside for the BYB welterweight title. Mistoka, Carlos Alexandre, faces Dragon Fist. Andre Yule. And the GOAT is back, looking to conquer the caveman. As the champion, Jose Fernandez, battles the interim title holder, Sam Liera, for the undisputed BYB Super Middleweight Championship. There's no way I can lose. The only person that's gonna beat me is myself. Jose, you won't beat yourself, that's my job. Our venue tonight, the Charles F. Dodge City Center in South Florida. You think it is hot and humid outside? Wait until the combatants enter the mighty Trigon inside. That right there is the smallest surface in combat sports. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, of course, with my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji. Not two, four belts on the line tonight, Paulie. And let's pick up that theme from London. Laurent T. Smash Nelson, victorious against another BKB champion in London a few months ago. He'll take on a reigning BKB champion in James Conley, and Smash took the fight on nine days' notice. Well, that's kind of the, the Smash way. You know, it he's, uh, we in boxing, we say have gloves, we'll travel. You don't need gloves here, so he can just travel, <laughs> and he's always ready to fight. Uh, the good thing about this fight is, you know, Conley is kind of taking up the, the BKB chip on his shoulder. You know, he, he realizes he realizes that Laurent T has beaten some of the BKB fighters, and he says, no, those were ex-champions. I'm a current champion. Don't disrespect me like that. I'm here to beat Laurent T. Should be a really good fight. It really should. Two very talented strikers who are ready once again to put on a show. And history will be made in the featherweight division. We will crown our first ever BYB featherweight world champion. It's the Buckeye, Brandon Burr, and he is a tough opponent in Harold McQueen. And McQueen made a debut against the well-established Pablo Caballero and destroyed him. I mean, Caballero had been looking good here at, at, at uh, BYB. You know, he was a guy who we really look, were looking at and say, you know, this guy can develop into something really good. He gotten some good wins. And all of a sudden, McQueen showed up sort of as an opponent. And he looked unbelievable. He blew him away. Looked really, really good. And now we're up here. We have the he's up against the Buckeye in a title fight against uh, Burr. And listen, Burr, he's 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 one of those guys. He's willing to taste his own blood to get a victory. Not shy about it. Comes from the MMA world. A little boxing versus MMA because McQueen's backyard is boxing. Should be a good one as well. His home gym, Strong Style in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, right outside of downtown Cleveland where Stipe Miocic trains. And, of course, he has a big fight coming up against John Jones. All right, let's get to our co-main event of the evening. That will be the third belt on the line. It is the BYB welterweight championship fight. Brazil's Carlos Alexandre against Andre Yule. Brazil against California, two very talented combatants. You know, in soccer, we have Brazil against Argentina. And in and, <laughs> and, 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 and BYB, we got Brazil against California. You know, these two guys, listen, have both shown their way that they're top-level guys. The the Brazilian, uh, is he's really one of these lanky guys. Yes. Knows, how to, knows how to really use that use that height, but generate a lot of power. Yule's got his handful, but if Yule gets inside, he's a handful. He certainly is. Very good speed, very good power, and very very dangerous both men are of course all right our main event 
of the evening is the champion against the interim champion. Basically, Jose Fernandez blew his shoulder out, but the GOAT is back. He said he is healthy. He was in a stabilizer for two months, therapy for six months. Sam Liera almost went through the same thing after his fight with Smash Nelson. Sam Liera, the interim champ, and Jose Fernandez, a lot of mutual respect. A lot of mutual respect. It's, it's a title fight. Both of these guys are both of these guys are battle tested. Both of these guys know what they're what they're up against, and they uh, in, in the other guy. Listen, Liera had to make, fight this eliminator against Smash T. I mean, if you're if there's ever a fight that gets you ready for a title fight, it's beating Smash. You know, I mean, that was by many people's standards the best bare knuckle fight they've ever seen. If you haven't seen Liera against Laurent T, uh, take it upon yourself to go watch that uh, in, in your spare time. But tonight, we've got Fernandez, the champion. I tell you, you're coming off a layoff. You want to fight this guy? It's no easy task. But Fernandez is champion for a reason. The GOAT wants to remain the GOAT and wants to make his title undisputed and basically say to Sam Liera, you just rented that interim belt. Great to be with you in our backyard. It is the Brawl in the Pines. BYB Extreme, the Trigon is open for battle. And of course, our patented Mighty Trigon is the smallest surface in combat sports. Oh, it sure is, man. Three equal sides, 21 by 21 by 21, 360 degree corners. That means you don't want to get caught up in those corners, Goldie, because there's a tough way out of there. You got to fight your way out of there. And of course, 90% KO rate. If there's nowhere to run, you're either going to fight or you're gonna get not fight and you're gonna get stopped because there's nowhere to run to survive the fight. Nowhere to run because you'll get caught in the corner. Now we wanna go over the rules for you. There are some new rules that were just sanctioned by the Association of Boxing Council. Fighters will no longer be permitted to use gloves or sleeves of any type, exposing the knuckles during the fight. All championship fights are now a maximum of six rounds, which pertains to some of our fights tonight for the men and for the women in a couple of months. And if you have not had a professional combat battle, your first fight is maxed out at four rounds. And we will have that later with Boss Hog taking on a newbie who happens to be a world champion in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then the rules you are familiar with. No three knockdown rule, 10 point. Must scoring system is in effect. Punching in the clinch is allowed. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight. All right, let's get things going. Our first fight of the night and our tail of the tape for this cruiserweight battle. And what a battle to get things started. Chad Kelly from Independence, Ohio against Zion Tomlinson Sr. Kelly, 11 years his elder. Tomlinson will have a three inch reach advantage. This fight scheduled for five three minute rounds. To get our affair officially underway, let's get it to the one, the only Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Charles F. Dodge Center here in Pembroke Pines, Florida. Tonight's home for BYB. 19 live on BN Sports. We have nine bouts on the card this evening, including four title fights to be held inside BYB's Mighty Trigon. So, Pembro Pines, can you hear me? No! First, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the Trigon, Zion Tomlinson! Zion Tomlinson Sr., Z-Man. What an impressive debut he made in the Trigon Back at BYB 17 in Rock Hill, South Carolina, finishing 
Mattia Fonda in round number two. And in that fight, Pauly, we saw a high level and a very impressive skill set from this young man. Yeah, Tomlinson really uh, was a bigger guy there. I remember Fonda talking about that he wanted to just fight at a comfortable way for him. And he ran into this truck that is Tomlinson and a really dominant performance against a guy who wasn't easy to take out. I mean, Fonda would always put up uh, very difficult fights for opponents. Uh, was always in exciting fights, but Tomlinson won in a one-sided uh, washing of uh, Fonda, and you know what? Made people curious about what's up for the future with him and how he's gonna look tonight. So let's see if he can continue that momentum. From Team Legion, he and his training partners train in his father's backyard. His trainer, Kane Tomlinson Sr. He is the Z-Man, Zion Tomlinson Sr. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, Chad Kelly! Born about 45 miles outside of Columbus, Ohio, Paula Fontaine now fighting out of suburban Independence, Ohio, outside of Cleveland, training with Marcus Marinelli and all the great fighters at the Strong Style Gym. We talked about Brandon Burr being from that same gym as Stipe Miocic. Well, so is Chad Kelly. Chad Kelly, 1-0 and oh inside the Trigon, and he had two very good fights in the BKB world in London. Won a draw with Anthony Holmes, and then he fought what is now the champion, Marco Martignac, the only time he has been stopped since very early in his combat career. Yeah, and Martignac uh, has, has been impressive consistently in, 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 uh, in anything bare knuckle that we've seen him in. So, uh, you know, not a not a terrible loss at the end of the day if it, that's your only stoppage loss. You get that right. Fighting style, he said, is aggressive. Started training in 2009 after an altercation as it is Chad Kelly and Zion Tomlinson Sr. to get us started here inside the Trigon. With the official introductions, once again, here is Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this opening contest and all bouts tonight are sanctioned by the Florida Athletic Commission and will be held under BYB's bare knuckle rule set inside the mighty Trigon. This cruiserweight contest is brought to you by the Galloway Group. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue quarter. We're in the black trunks with gold trim. He stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 184.4 pounds. He comes to us with a professional bare knuckle record of three victories versus three defeats. And he fights out of Roanoke, Virginia. Here is Zion, Z-Man. Tomlinson Sr. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 185.4 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of two victories versus one loss and one draw. And he fights out of Independence, Ohio. Here is the butcher, Chad. Our referee in charge, Bobby Wambacher. Bobby Wambacher, our referee for the first fight of a tremendous night. They expected inside the Trigon. Tomlinson Sr. and Kelly. Chad. Right here, Zion. Chad right there. Gentlemen, ready? Fight. Here we go! Zion Tomlinson Sr. will switch up his stance. Black and gold right, trunks guys. for Z-Man, the butcher, Chad Kelly, in the orange and blue trunks. See Kelly trying to get off that aggressive start. Tomlinson almost back in a counter-punching mode, trying to switch up stances as he goes backwards. And Kelly now back in that inside clinch. Wow, there this blood already. That didn't take very long, did it, partner? Oh, no. And in bare knuckle fighting and BYP especially, and a Trigon especially, it's usually instantaneous. A lot of work being done in the clinch here early. Dirty boxing 
is permitted here in the BYB world. And Tomlinson's clinch obviously was effective in opening up that cut. They were both getting off shots in there. Yeah. Just the blood obviously seems like it makes it at least seem that Tomlinson landed the better shots in time. And, and he's blinking, uh, is Kelly. That blood, that blood is bothering him. Rolling down and affecting his eyesight. And again, you see Z-Man, Zion Tomlinson Sr. just switching his stance seamlessly. Lands with the left. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Seems like these guys are more adept on the inside. On the yeah. outside, they're a little bit awkward. They're, they're not, they have trouble finding their range. But on the inside, they're, they're stop, seems like they get very comfortable trying to get each other stop into that Muay Thai clinch and trying to throw and uh, hold and hit there. The dirty boxing is, is, is allowed in BYB. Chad Kelly's been fighting bare knuckles since 2019. And look at that cut. It's on, it's on his, yeah. almost on his scalp. Nasty and rolling down into a bad place. Sparred with Julian Lane and others. And Zion Tomlinson Sr. Oh. had an eight week camp for this one. A good shot there by Kelly as Tomlinson backed up. Now Tomlinson's got him back in the clinch. One thing about Tomlinson, he's, he's very, he, he's not adept too much on the outside where he goes, has a tendency to go straight back and, and has a risk getting caught. But he ends up getting you in a clinch where he's very, very comfortable. And he kind of uh, not only mitigates the damage, but he ends up taking advantage. Tomlinson said he has been working on his angles, his entrances in preparation for this fight. 30 seconds on the clock, round one. And like you said, Goldie, he's switching stances back and forth. Now he's in the southpaw stance. Now he's in the right-handed stance as I say that. It worked for Terrence Crawford. <laughs> to say the least, right? Yep. Stop. Step back. Final 10 seconds, round number one. Oh, good right hand there, Kelly. That's the second good right hand that he's landed this round. One thing, and, and, and both of them have come in the second part of the round. I wonder if... It's something that Kelly has noticed now. Because again, I, I, I could notice that Tomlinson on the outside is a little bit awkward. He's yeah. comfortable on the inside. There's a couple there. Yep. Set for round number two. Zion Tomlinson Sr. comes out orthodox. Black and gold trunks. Little black and red Ohio State Buckeye colors for the butcher who grew up just about 45 minutes outside of Columbus, Ohio. Clinch work again, dirty boxing. Kelly said to us in the fighter interviews that he has no quit button. He had not been stopped in a fight of any type in years before he was stopped by Marco Martignac in December of last year in London. And like you said a moment ago, Marco Martignac is very dangerous. Yeah, but one thing you got to notice about Kelly is his mouth is starting to be a little bit more wide open. And he's, uh, you know... You, that usually t tends to say that you're getting a little bit tired, you're starting to breathe out of your mouth. You see, you're getting a little bit lazy the way he's biting yep. on the mouthpiece. And now he's coming his way inside, trying to be aggressive. Trying to work Tomlinson in the corner, right in front of our broadcast position. The butcher nickname was given to him by an old coach, Chad Kelly, training partners because of his fighting style. And Kelly's eyes bothering him again. He keeps blinking. You see, right? You, you watch me. He just keeps blinking that left eye. Yeah. 
He's trying to break Tomlinson down. See, Tomlinson will go straight back. He'll make that mistake, but then you got to be careful not to smother yourself. Because then if you smother yourself, and it's not boxing, you, oh, Tomlinson goes down here. Tomlinson will get you in that clinch. Although I think that pace, that heavy pace that Kelly's putting on Tomlinson is now starting to take effect. He's up. The one thing that we have seen multiple times is Tomlinson continues to get stuck in the corners. Yeah, and well, he, he backs up straight on defense, you know? And a lot of times his, his clinch has allowed him to, you know, survive that and even give him the advantage, but it seems like Kelly's pace is now starting to bother him more and more. You see Tomlinson in a more defensive posture, even on the inside now, and there he goes down again. As opposed to before, he was aggressive. Now he's complaining about behind his ear where he didn't even get hit behind, I mean behind his neck where he didn't get hit behind his neck. He just got pushed down. So it's already, you can already see psychologically he's, he's looking to be out of the fight soon. Bobby Wambacher says, fight on. Yeah, nice jab there. That may be it. So you can see, you can tell his body language. I don't know if he's going to get up from this one. You said that Kelly saw something at the end of round one, Paulie. He's utilizing whatever he saw here in round two. A good credit to Tomlinson, though. A good credit to Tomlinson. Oh, oh Tom. man. And, you know what? Kelly was not paying attention. I give credit to Tomlinson, man. And the round comes to a close. It was almost WWE-like. Yeah, it was. Where Kelly got caught celebrating, and Tomlinson's, hey, Tomlinson's allowed to hit him. Tomlinson has to beat the count first before the round can end. I don't know what's going on over here. He's got to be able to get back to his own corner, which I don't know if he can. They're not allowed to help him off. Or are they stopping it? It looks like it's over. Must be over. Well, Tomlinson went in there after the stoppage when Kelly was already celebrating, but he, he paid a big price for it. No, no, I, I don't think they were stopped. I think Tomlinson Well, not a stoppage, the count. Sorry, yeah, Paulie, the, the count. Yeah, I think Tomlinson beat the count, and, and Kelly was celebrating too early. Yeah, yeah. Got himself clipping on the punch. But, of course, that was all Tomlinson had was that extra punch yes. while he was celebrating. Thought it was a good idea to go in there and battle with the butcher, and the butcher continued to do what he does best. Hey, Take a look at it. Let's see the replay here. You can just see Kelly starting to wear down Tomlinson. It was that was see that one didn't even hit him. That one was more form. It grazed across his across his, his head. Look right there a little bit, you know, and, and he was. I think that might have been the last knockdown. Let's see. You see? Oh yeah, they, they, they did. They did actually kind of hit him behind the ear. But it was more the 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 physical pace of the fight. It, it debilitates you. It wears on you. Bare knuckle fighting has that effect too. You start to see your own blood like crazy. It, it, it's a bit primal. So you've got to psychologically stay within the fight, stay within yourself. You want to continue. Kelly's a good example of that, despite the blood on his face, despite the blood that he was seeing early on. He ends up, uh, you know, he ends up, uh, we're trying to get here uh, some, some ruling by Wambacher. Uh, did they disqualify? Well, what Bobby just said is there was a, it, now it's over officially, but there was a foul after the knockdown, which is why Zion Tomlinson Sr. was given all that extra time because it was a foul okay. committed by Kelly at the end, but still, it was a hit down? after, yeah, yeah, okay. hit a downed opponent. Nonetheless, <laughs> Chad Kelly saw something at the end of round number one, and finishes Zion Tomlinson at the end of round number two. It's the psychology of this is incredible, you know, because the, 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 this kind of fighting, it's incredible, because really, you can literally just wear down and grind down your opponent in this. I mean, yeah, that's, you can do that in all combat sports, but in bare knuckle fighting, it's it's so primal. It's You can almost just see it happening. I mean, you can see Tomlinson had the advantage in the fight, and then little by little, Kelly just grinds him down and finally beats him into submission, and you can watch it happen right in front of your eyes. 2.59 of round number two, the official time of the stoppage. Winner by TKO. Gotta go and get some, some stitches now. Those are some deep cuts. As they attend to Chad Kelly.
And now, Pauly, we are hearing that this may be a no contest. So we'll wait for the official word from the judges and from Bobby Wambacher and Big Mo will tell us. And, and that goes back to the foul yeah. that was committed when Kelly basically had the fight in hand. Yeah, I mean, I think Kelly thought that Tomlinson wasn't allowed to hit him, and so he just kept hitting him when he was down. Let's see. It seems like Kelly kind of lost track of what the actual rules are here in fighting. Yeah, he's still hitting. Yeah, he's still hitting there. Yeah, he, yeah. I, I think he thought he got fouled. Well, he didn't realize he didn't get fouled. So he Correct. thought, hey, you're going to foul me. I'm going to foul you back. And that ends up actually costing him the win here if, it's, if it winds up being a no contest. And Chad was upset by the fact, even though it was legal, that Tomlinson Sr. came in after the yeah, eight count. Exactly. And he thought he got fouled. Yeah. He thought he got fouled. He thought Tomlinson yep. was, wasn't allowed to hit him when he's not looking while he's getting counted. Buddy, that you're within within the round. The rule is uh, protect yourself at all times. You so instead it. of talking to the camera like they do in WWE when they get hit from behind, they usually stage that kind of stupidity. You know, you, know, you can't really do that uh, in, the, in the real fight. He's got he's, he's to stay alert, and that's a learning lesson for him the next time around. He's got to stay alert. And, uh, and this, I, I don't think that he realized that that wasn't a foul. Right. And so when he gets ends up getting Tomlinson down, he's he's acting out of rage instead of acting as an athlete, so he's going to continue to hit him when he's down. He's like, hey, we're going to turn it into a street fight. I'll make it a street fight, too, when in reality, that was still part of the competition when Tomlinson had hit him while he's talking to the camera. All right, let's get the official decision from Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number two, Bobby Wambacher calls a stop to this fight. And due to a foul at the end of the round and an inability to continue, this bout has been ruled a no contest. And Paulie, I think what you said is exactly what was going through the mind and through the heart and through the blood of Chad Kelly was yeah. the emotion of Tomlinson very fairly coming after him after mm. he was counted to eight again because Chad was celebrating prematurely and then he just tried to finish it and just yeah, and, tried too hard. And you know what? All the effort Kelly, all the good work Kelly did in, in grinding through the, the negativity of the early part of the fight where Tomlinson had him cut and Tomlinson was winning. And Kelly showed uh, such such posture and such, such poise and such uh, 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 heart and such character to grind through it and then eventually grind down his opponent and be on the verge of victory only to take, snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Yeah. I mean, really, he was he, he, he snatched the victory away from himself by doing that. And he ends up ending up with a no contest. So the first one, a no contest between Zion Tomlinson Sr. and Chad the Butcher Kelly. Saturday, September 16th, her knuckle fighting returns to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum in Biloxi for BYB 20. Our main event is the highly anticipated rematch for the BYB women's lightweight belt between the champ Patty Juarez and Biloxi's own Monica Medina. All the fights happen inside BYB's patented Mighty Trigon, the smallest fighting surface in combat sports. Visit BYBExtreme.com today for tickets and information. That first fight was a very memorable one. We expect more of the same in Biloxi. But up next, Jessica Smith and Casey Deeds are tail of the tape for this welterweight fight. Born in Oklahoma, fighting out of Sport Smith, Arkansas. 38-year-old Casey Deeds, six years the elder of the doc, Jessica Smith, who will have a three-inch reach advantage. Fight is scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, here is Jessica Smith. The one thing that we left without a doubt in our minds when talking about Jessica Smith in Dubai is that is one tough athlete. But she had only had six weeks of training going into the fight. She had been on weight. She was ready to go. AJ Easley 
has taken her under his wing. AJ was not able to go to Dubai. He is in the corner tonight. Jessica feels differently, and AJ said she is a different fighter. I know it was tough for us to watch Jessica being so tough at times, Pauly in Dubai, so let's see what she brings tonight. Well, that was it. At the time, she just didn't have enough experience. We're going to see how much her improvement has, has come now, has shown now, has happened in the gym here in this performance. Her toughness was without question, but she just didn't have any answers. So it's not always a matter of will. It's a matter of skill. She had all the will, but she was lagging in the skill department, and she was kept putting herself in troublesome situations in that fight. Well, tonight we get a chance to see her uh, and see how much improvement she's made in the gym. And, of course, the, just the fact that she's back after having to suffer a, 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 a defeat like that shows the character that she has. She, this is a determined individual. A lot of people would have just took that and gone home and then not come back. A lot of people would have gone home about midway through round number one, but not yeah. Jessica Smith. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is just a few months back. I mean, she's probably been training the whole time since she's been home, back home and ready to show and make an, uh, a better impression of herself this time. Let's see what she brings tonight. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome the Trigon, Casey Dees. A power lifter. She's been an athlete throughout her life. And then when she was pregnant, she couldn't do power lifting anymore, Paulie, so she started to train boxing. Yeah, well. There's always something that you'll find, right? Yep, for sure. February 2021, she watched the Paige Van Zandt, Brittany Hart weigh in, and she said she was hooked. She had a baby in July of 2021, and then got ready with her coach, Brian Jones, for an amateur tournament in Las Vegas, and eventually, her glove boxing got a foot in the door for her in bare knuckle boxing. Second time we will see Casey Dees in the Trigon. 11-year-old William, 9-year-old Josh started school today, she told us in the fighter meetings. And her 2-year-old, the one that she was pregnant with when she started boxing, Zedekiah, biblical name, she said she calls him Zed Zilla. And she knows in that woman right there, she is taking on a super fit athlete who is extremely tough. With the official introductions, once again, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's welterweight division. And is brought to you by Buy Cell Clothing. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Sam Burgos. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks with gold trim, she stands five feet, seven inches tall. She weighed in at 147.4 pounds. Looking for her first bare knuckle victory, she fights out of Long Beach, California. Introducing Jessica the Doc Smith. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim. She stands five feet, six inches tall. She weighed in at 147.4 pounds. Seeking her first bare knuckle victory, she fights out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Dees. Jessica Smith, Casey Dees. Welterweight contest. Five two-minute rounds. Here we go. Jessica Smith. Black top, black trunks. And in the red top and trunks is Casey Dees. T. Smith came out of the southpaw. Still coming out of the southpaw yep. here. AJ Easley don't hold, don't hold. said she is a totally different person. Pre Dubai, she had sparred, stop, stop, stop. count them, zero oh. times, Paulie. Yeah, you don't want to go into a fight without sparring, especially your first competition. I mean, that was, that's crazy that she did that. And AJ Easley said about Jessica going into Dubai and entering the Trigon, he said that was a victory in itself. Mm -hmm. Now let's see how much she has learned 
with AJ Easley and with AJ in her corner tonight. Yeah, you can tell she has a, a, a sense of range of stepping out, stepping in. You know, it's obviously still a lot to work on. She keeps the chin up a little bit too high in the air for my liking. But nonetheless, I mean, she, she, just the fact, the understanding of range that she has is already a major, major change. And Deesa's going to have to have that understanding of range herself. She's a little bit slow on her feet, so she's going to have to figure out a way to be able to put Jessica in position to hit her. And she has a good right hand there on the inside. As they clinch, you can see how super fit and athletic Jessica Smith is. She has a master of science in human performance and applied sports science. Emphasis in sports and performance psychology, thus the nickname The Doc. A good right hand there, and again, came off a counter, came off a step back. And, and, and these kind of, these kind of looks like the way Jessica looked a few months ago when, the, when shots yeah. are coming her way. She looks uncomfortable, tries to throw a shot there, but Deese is not really reacting in the way you need her to react when, when, when offense is coming her way. While on the other side, Jessica now understands stepping in, stepping out, little drop, little faints. She's understanding that distance range control can help her a lot. She slips there and tries to counter as well. Definitely a different fighter than the one we saw in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, it's just a fighter with a, with a general understanding of, of what she wants to do and not do. And, and I actually see, because of her athleticism, there's potential to get even better. See if these can make the adjustments in the corner. She gets some instructions. AJ Easley. AJ told us we have a plan. Now she has done it. You can't teach heart the start of round number two. Basketball player, power lifter, and now bare knuckle boxer Casey Dees in the red, in the black, Jessica Smith. Oh, Dees with a good right hand there. And that was a bit of a balance shot, yeah. Yep. Dees made her debut just about a year ago and lost to Skylar Burns by TKO dock stoppage in round number three. Jessica Smith is one of the most polite and respectful athletes you will meet. But she did say of her opponent, she appears to be allergic to knuckles when looking at her last fight against Skylar Burns. Take down, two points. Jessica's trying to break that clinch. Yep. She's gonna get a warning here, but you see she's trying to break that clinch. Man, we thought that Jessica Smith was in great condition before. She is in incredible condition and just a different look in her eyes than we saw in Dubai. I just see her thinking a little bit more than than uh, than is Dees. Dees kind of has those that high guard, but she's not really looking to change the angle, not looking to drop any feints, kind of stepping around, but not really sure of what she's looking for while while Jessica stalks her. You know, you, when you fight going backwards, you're usually in a counter punching mode. I'm not I'm not, I'm not really seeing Dees in that counter punching mentality, even though she's in a counter punching mode. KCD said in her fight against Skylar Burns that she just didn't stick with the plan. She got overexcited. She was 100% into what was happening. She said even the walkout was intense. She said, I have a great jab, straight punches, but it just all went away because she got overexcited in her bare knuckle debut. Final seconds of round number two. Dee just kind of backs up and throws the occasional right hand, and it does land at times. Some of that action here we saw. It was a left left hook, right hand down the middle. That was a good shot there by Dees, and a little pushback from um, from um, 
from uh, the doc. The doc herself, yeah. The job, Jessica Smith, you know, and uh, the good, that was a good little setup. That was the best moment of the round for Deez. She, that, uh, it, that's a, that's a, a simple combination. They teach a lot of boxers is that wide left hook to get you to kind of pull back on it so that the right hand down the middle can, uh, you know, you won't see it coming. And she used that one perfectly. But she's got to be a little bit more busy. I think even Jessica Smith can be a little bit more busy. You know, she, you know, she's more athletic. She's trying to create a lot, but I think even even she can take more advantage of some of the things that. Casey Diaz, Diaz is all offering up. They clinch again. The ref will break. Jessica Smith, a seven-time collegiate All-American in various competitions, including the pentathlon. Oh, good right hand there again. She did it all. She said her best track and field attributes were the shot put and the javelin. So let's call the javelin the jab, and the shot put would be the big put-down punch. She, She's got to be careful here. The D's now landing a good left hook on the inside. But also, one problem I'm also seeing, Jessica, she's running into right hands. she got her lead hand down. It's okay to fight with your hands down if you're in counter-punching mode, but when you're coming forward, you need to have your, your guard up because you're going to the danger. I've seen Jessica run into a few right hands uh, in this fight now, and, and Dees is starting to kind of have an understanding that that right hand could land. And Dees with that, that physical strength from her background as a power lifter, Dees obviously wants to work inside and make this fight dirty. Fight scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Yeah. Smith changing her stance again. And, and, and then Dees having a better round this round as well. Yeah. And you can start to see it, it's, it's affecting uh, Jessica a little bit. It's, as even that physical strength on the inside, Dees has from power lifting. Also trying to muscle around Jessica. As Jessica again won't have it with another attempted twist around takedown. Get, get, things getting feisty in there. Things getting physical in there. Well, Casey which, which, said, also, which also fatigues you. Yes, yes. Casey said she loves the oh, dirty boxing. Oh, right hand no. answered by Smith. Again, Both women Jessica wobbled Jessica at the end of the running. round. Jessica just keeps running into that right hand. Yep. She's got her left hand down, and she goes straight in the front door. And these, all these is doing is just throwing. She calls her eyes and throw it. So again, you gotta, you gotta be a little bit more deceptive. You gotta either have your hands up, or you gotta change your levels, change your height on the way in, maybe drop a feint on the way in, something. You see, Jessica had a cognizant understanding of a distance early in the fight where she was coming in and out. She had more springy legs. Now she's getting tired. She's getting a little bit sloppy with her entry and having her hand down doesn't help her. You see some of that replay action there. There's a the right hand, and she's coming in with her hands down. And you see she takes another one, just for good measure. There's a good jab by Jessica, and again, right there. See your right hand, and another right hand there by Jessica Dees. And literally, the second one, she's not even looking. You can just yeah. throw it, because you know Jessica's coming in with her chin in the air, and her hands down. So Jessica has to correct that, that, techni that technical mistake. Well, these also could probably just get a little bit busier now. Yeah, so she's starting to see something. She had a better round last round. Very animated AJ Easley in the corner of Jessica Smith. Round number four of this five-round matchup. Pawing out that jab from the orthodox stance. He's again with those right hands. Oh, Jessica walking away and not defending herself. Yeah, and she's, she's having trouble getting out of the way of it, and she's getting more and more uncomfortable, and Deese is starting to gain that growing confidence. Some good uppercuts thrown by Smith. Yeah, and it's getting sloppy in there, too. It's yes, it is. Tired. It's getting sloppy, which also now the, the physical bullying also can have an effect. Good right hand there by Jessica Smith. And good right hand. She got clipped hard. I mean, these, these just can't land, miss a right hand unless she misses it herself. Jessica Smith is not getting out of the way of any of these shots. She's not adjusting by putting her, hand, her hands up. Trying to slip and return. Yeah, and Jessica Smith is sort of a paradox because she yep. wants to be aggressive, but she didn't, she wants to be aggressive, but she doesn't want to run into right hands. So you got to be aggressive by having a better technical uh, foundation with you with your hand positioning. 
And if she loses aggression, it, it gives Deez a chance to pick up her aggression. And that's sort of what's been happening these past couple of rounds. 20 seconds on the clock here in round number four. I'll tell you, this fight could all come down to round five. I was, I was just going to ask you, Polly. Very, very tough one for the judges. And you can see the fatigue on Casey Deez. Yeah, but also, you know, it looked like Jessica early on in the fight had a big advantage, but I don't know if, if these last couple of rounds, if she's won them. Good exchange here at the bell, but, has, you know, again, I'm not sure if it's enough for Jessica. And both are going to be tired. This is going to really come down to who wants it more in round five. And, and Jessica Smith has to be careful with that chin in the air when she makes her entrance. Got to be very careful. Look at that. She don't like it when you push her around back. Stronger. How you took your time? That's what I want. Pick your shots. Make her miss, make, you, make her pay. You have to land everything right now. Do you understand? Do not let her flinch. When she flinches, you have to so that shots here, these, these just, these not even looking, she's just throwing right hands. Here she misses them, and you see a good combination there by Jessica Smith. This was actually at the belt when Smith made a one last attempt to try to win, get the round back. Getting set for the fifth and final round. Jessica Smith, Casey Dees, both women looking for their first win inside the mighty Trigon. Oh, Dees, something nice. happened with her shoulder. Yeah, and, and big, big, big chance here for Jessica. And she stopped. What happened? She might have pulled out her shoulder. Yep, it is all over. Dees did something to her shoulder. They're checking on her right now. Looked like the ref had waved it off for a moment, but she may have popped her shoulder right out. Yeah. It doesn't look like this fight's continuing. Yeah, she's getting out. Yeah. Jessica Smith with the victory. We were looking for a big finish from somebody, but a little bit anticlimactic, but a good effort put in by Jessica Smith. Some good improvements shown from her, and uh, she can get back to the gym and, and continue to make those improvements as we see Deese's shoulder. I think, I think she might have torn her bicep tendon only because she just pointed, pointed to, it, huh? to that point where, unfortunately, I did it that's, that's, that's years a, ago. That's a rough that's point to come back from, right? Yep. Let's take a look at it. Let's see here. Yeah, and there was a lot yet. She kind of just feels it. Something's in her arm. Yeah, yeah, it's a TKO. She's unable to go. Yeah, she got. Let's see. She throws it right there, and then she, something, something's up. Yeah, she she grabs her sh shoulder like on the bicep area, right? That was it. She was. And that's done. where it'll split. Yeah, yeah, at that tendon, right? Yep, right there. And it, it might have been they were just tangled. Yeah. And so it becomes a TKO victory for Jessica Smith in the fifth and final round. Casey Dees with a shoulder injury. And later on our main event, the GOAT, Jose Fernandez, coming off major shoulder surgery, yeah. looking to tell Sam Liera that he's renting that interim belt. Let's make this one official, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sam Burgos calls his stop to this contest at 19 seconds of the fifth and final round. Declaring your winner by TKO, Jessica Natar Smith. Jessica Smith, we saw evolution, but there is still more evolving to be done. And I think the first person to say that and admit to that would be Jessica herself, Paulie. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And she's, uh, but already we saw a good amount of evolution tonight. Yes, first big time, big time. That's a positive she can take with her. So congratulations to Doc J, Jessica Smith, earning her first victory inside the Trigon. Big smile on her face. The smile and a sigh of relief as well. As she gets the victory. Casey Dees pulling something on the right side in the fifth round. So we go from that welterweight matchup. Next up, the heavyweights.
Levi Costa from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, against the hammer, Josh Burns. That fight in the heavyweight division is coming up next. Set for a heavyweight confrontation between the Pitbull and the Hammer. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight matchup. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's Levi Costa, 37 years old. Josh the Hammer Burns, born in Ohio, big Buckeye and Bengals fan. 45 years old, slight reach advantage, and much heavier on the scale, 23 pounds heavier than his opponent, now fighting out of San Diego, California. <laughs> the big boys dig in. They are ready. Pembroke Pines, are you ready for the heavyweights? Our third contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds and features a combined weight of over 500 pounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the Trigon, Levi Costa. Levi Costa, 37 years old, a two-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion. Very happy to get a multi-fight deal here with BYB from our Hall of Fame matchmaker, Mel Valenzuela, who's watching at home. Mel, feel better. We miss you, Papi. And we watch Levi Costa make his debut inside the Trigon, one and one in his professional bare knuckle boxing career amongst those in which he trains with in San Diego, Phil Davis, one of my favorite fighters of all time. Has not fought MMA since 2012. Three and one in gloved boxing. And Levi Costa is a black belt in not just Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but also in kickboxing. And not much better music to walk into. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drago! Josh the Hammer Burns. His son Gabriel will walk in with him. Chris Saros as well. During the fighter interviews, Gabriel, his son, was asked if he has advice for his father, and he said, just to do good. <laughs> I tell you, Tom, speaking of good ring entrance music, yeah, this is pretty good too. <laughs> you got that right. Metallica. 264 tonight, coming off of multiple injuries. Josh Burns cut down from 276 pounds. He knows his opponent is tough, but he said everything has healed up very nicely, and the hammer is back. Six wins, all by knockout. Seven defeats, all but one time he was finished. So he leaves it all inside the combat surface. Went the distance in his debut in 2017 against Tony Lopez. Since then, it's win or lose by finish. He is Josh the Hammer Burns. He's pumped. He is pumped. Ladies and gentlemen, this heavyweight bare knuckle bout is just for five three minute rounds and is brought to you by GC3 Live. On BN Sports, our referee in charge when the bell rings, Bobby Wambacher. Let's meet the fighters. First, 
fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the brown trunks with black trim. He stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 240.8 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of one victory versus one defeat. And he fights out of San Diego, California by wearing Terrasopolis, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Levi Pitbull. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, he stands six feet tall. He weighed in 264.2 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of six victories versus seven defeats with all six wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of the D, Detroit, Michigan. Josh Burns, Levi Costa. Here we go. Fight scheduled for five three minute rounds. Costa, the southpaw, has the reach advantage. Burns loves dirty boxing. He loves to get inside it. That was one of the problems he was having when he fought Tony Lopez, who was yes. so tall. He was very, very adept at keeping the fight on the outside. And in his fight, in August of last year against DJ Linderman, he was upset it was stopped due to a cut. But he said overall his eye is healed. He wants to showcase the hammer skills, knock Costa out, and tell the world that he is back. Time will tell. Well, he's a little bit lighter now, right? He yep. trimmed some of the weight. You can see it's, a, it, it's helping with some of his foot speed. The way he enters, tries to close that gap. He's got a quick first step there. And that could also be a, a, bit, a little bit helpful when you're uh, a few pounds lighter. And, and probably one of the things in the fighter meetings he told us, he has worked on his balance and his footwork. Big swing and a miss, good counter by Costa. Yeah, Costa looking to, you know, he's looking at a back pedal again, a counter punching stance. Look at that. Just keep that lead hand out there and back pedal and looking to step back, looking to have Burns cover the gap that he leaves and so he can counter him. That's what he tried to do with that left hand. You can see the, some of the marks on the cheek of Burns from that having worked. Costa said of his opponent, he is pretty well rounded, so I have to show him my different dimensions. And that was a quick hook that lands in a straight left afterwards by Costa. Yeah, Costa using a, has a nice repertoire. Man, he did say, right, was he kickboxer? Yep, or, yep, so. black belt in, uh, obviously, multiple world champion in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but black belt in kickboxing as well, Paul. They give belts in kickboxing? Go. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that, I thought it was just karate. They, 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 you know, <laughs> black belts are... Well, they're not common. You get them at J.C. Penny from Mr. Miyagi, but you know. I'm wearing a black belt now. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> I, don't know if it, I don't know if it means I can step with the trigon. Oh, another good left hand there. Oh, a nice combination. Oh, and Burns was in big trouble. That was impressive. You like the way he came around the side with the left hand, and because he landed that big shot outside, it made Burns dip low, and Costa caught onto it and came with the uppercut as Burns dipped low. Very good awareness on the, on the part of Costa not to get overexcited when he did some damage, and that way he was able to land the follow-up shots. Brown, gold, and black. Costa, the Brazilian. And now they both go down. Big shot from... One knockdown each, Pauly. Yeah, I didn't see it because Wambaco was in the way, the referee. Of course, he's got a, the right to be in my way. He's got to be the referee, but I want to see it in the replay what exactly landed there. Ten seconds, round one. Big boy's not disappointing. Not, not at all. Oh, and again, I like the angles Costa shows. He's got a little, short little uppercut there with the right hand. It was like a long uppercut. He looked like he was kind of probing with that lead hand. Now, all of a sudden, he just turned it into a quick little lead uppercut and then followed it with a le short left. Good creativity on the part of, of, uh, of, of Costa. And you can see that he has that experience in, in, the, in, in one of the arts of staying up fighting. Strikes 
first. See, there was a, that was, I think this might have been the first knock. Oh, look at that, that was the, the uppercut there. After he had hit him around the side. You saw Burns react a little bit uncomfortable. And let's see this, let's see if Burns comes back here. Let's see how Burns gets his knockdown. Oh, this was, uh, oh, right there. Well, oh, nice shout out. And was, you know what? The check hook is his favorite yeah, punch. Well, uh, and we saw why right there. Yeah, exactly. The display of it with that knockdown. Round number two, Josh Burns in the black trunks. Levi Costa, brown, gold, and black trunks. He is the southpaw from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Costa trained by Adrian Melendrez, boxing coach to over 30 oh, UFC yeah. fighters in the San Diego area. And right on cue, Adrian Student knocks the hammer down again. Costa with an overhand left. Overhand left again. He ch keeps changing the angles on the punches. It makes it hard to anticipate for Burns what Costa wants to bring. Even with that lead hand, watch him switch it into a hook or an uppercut. He's very, very tricky with it. And he changes speed on his shots too, which also makes him tough to time and tough to anticipate defensively. And Costa very patient and yeah. methodical. Nice jab. Yep. And you see there, he's, he's looking to probe the distance, and then all of a sudden he'll turn into a quick jab. But then he'll surprise you with a left hand out of nowhere, and that's how he scored the knockdown. And that's what Burns has to do. Burns has to keep, keep him busy with his own jab. Good combination there by Costa. Levi Costa said if you use angles and range and work off the jab, as you talked about, Paulie, the Trigon works well for him. And Bur Burns has to get back on his own jab. He's got to yes. at least keep Costa busy. He's got to keep Costa busy, maybe drop some feints in there. Break up Costa's rhythm, because Costa is in a very nice rhythm right now, and it's working very well for him. He's changing the speed on the shots. There, there's, there was something from Burns there. So got to co come with something there. Again, that wide left hand has been very successful for Costa. Costa looking to finish it. Burns covers up, protecting himself. Just past the midway point of round number two. His corner, the corner of Josh Burns telling him to return the fire. Little slip and rip. Oh, again, change of angle as he steps around. So that jab, that little step around, and Burns dipped, and Costa used that left hand as he stepped around. He talked about the angles, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Yep. Even that little head movement is creating punching angles. Burns trying to walk in the front door. He's trying to force his way in, but he's got to use at least a feint on the way in or something to kind of give Costa a little, make, make Costa budge or make Costa bite on something false. Because right now, Costa is ready to time anything Burns does. So if, Costa, if Burns can give him some bait, maybe he'll, he'll, he'll bite on that. The corner of Burns saying you're waiting to get hit, and do then not right. let Costa go off first. And they're right, if you, if you, if you wait on Costa, Costa's gonna keep creating what he's creating, and he's gonna do a very good job. Good combination late in the round by the Brazilian making his BYB debut. You don't wanna give a guy like Costa time, because he's gonna get more and more comfortable in that rhythm. He just creates the punching angles with his feet, he creates the punching angles with his head movement, and of course, the different speed at which he uses that hand probing. Very, very creative fighter. I don't give a fuck what you got in your head. Focus on this right now. Where's my board? Take the angle. Talked about some of the good things Costa was doing, and that was a Ooh. big left hand right there. Again, you see how he changes his speed. He went from probing, probing. Now you're looking at everything up the middle. All of a sudden, he throws a big left hand from the back, and he throws it with a lot of speed. Well, it changes the speed on the shots. Surprise Burns. Burns has to be alert to these things, to so these changes of speeds. And, and the way you can also break it up is using your own feints, using your own uh, distance changes as well. Burns is sort of standing in front of Costa like a sitting duck, and it's allowing Costa to be this creative. Heavyweight battle continues. Big Mo did the math. Over 500 pounds of bare knuckle fighters inside the smallest surface in combat sports. The Southpaw, the Pitbull, Brown, Gold, and Black Trunks. Josh the Hammer Burns trying to get out of the way nice of the Pitbull again. Nice feet, Costa. And he steps back and then, stand and gives a little side swipe to Burns and sends him into the corner. 
And Burns is trying to rush his way in, but again, he'd be better off using a feint and then rushing in, or a feint and then punching, or maybe a quick level change, something to make Costa bite first, because Costa's ready to react on anything, and his reactions are well-timed, they're, they're very good. So you want to give him something to react on that is false, and that's it. you do that by, by using your feints. Otherwise, he's going to continue to stay comfortably at this range and look to create what he's going to create. Josh Burns' father played for the Cleveland Browns. Josh has told us in the past he's just not a team sport guy, though, which is fine. So you get into fighting, and the only guy you can congratulate or blame is yourself. A little check hooks there by Costa as well. Was his father on those Browns teams of the 80s with uh, Kozar? Uh, probably a little older than that. A little older. So yeah, so they want because Josh part. is 45, but that might have worked. Bernie Kozar, Youngstown, Ohio. Man. They lost three AFC championships. You got that right. National championships at the U, not far from where yeah. we are. Art Modell owned. Art Modell. The pre-Ravens Browns. That's correct. Not the recreated Browns. <laughs> the real Browns. <laughs> that were founded by the, original. the Browns. Yeah. Just over a minute, round number three. Born in Cincinnati, but growing up in Cleveland, you brought up a lot of memories there. <laughs> oh, little combination there by Costa again. Burns is forced to hold. Stop. It's right. Stop. And he's Fight. doing a good job of turning that probe jab into a right hook sometimes. And then when he does turn it into a right hook, he again, he increases the speed so that out of nowhere, it's not only a change of angle for Burns, but it's also a shock because it's coming at a different angle at a, at a much higher velocity than the velocity at which probe, uh, uh, Burns Costa was uh, just probing. 30 seconds. Round three. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Yeah, Burns is not thinking his way through. He's trying no. to tough his way through it. And he, of course, you're never going to question the toughness of Burns. He's always there. He's always you know, no quitting the guy. But he's got to think his way through these kind of situations because he gets he gets out thought, and then because of it, he gets out skilled. And that's what Costa has been doing tonight. Which is what we talked about at the beginning of the fight that Levi Costa was looking to display the multiple dimensions of his fight arsenal. But the battle continues. Yeah. Still two rounds. He's got two rounds to try to turn this around. Yeah, you see that counter there from Costa as he's backing up, and then he looks to get back on the offensive. Not only two rounds, Paulie, but it's a heavyweight bare knuckle fight. How about one punch from turning things around? Yep. Round number four. Josh Burns has not gone the distance in a bare knuckle fight since his professional debut in January of 2017. Costa's one and one in his BYB debut. A first round finish was his victory. He was finished at the end of the second round or late in the third, pardon me, in his second professional bare knuckle battle. Burns a bit more aggressive here now. Yeah, and he's trying to get in there, but again, you gotta be careful trying to come in through the front door, but Costa's trying to time him with that shot. Josh Burns attended the Ohio State University. Oh. Friends with Mark Coleman for over two decades. And it is with the blessing of the Godfather ground and pound, Mark the Hammer Coleman, that Josh has that same moniker, Josh the Hammer Burns. I asked Josh if he has to pay Coley monthly to keep the hammer nickname. <laughs> he said, no, he's, he lets me have it free now. Big shout out Stop, to Mark Coleman. Step back. Fight. Again, you hate to see Burns. He's not, not thinking his way through things. He's trying to 
to, to just grabbed onto that lead hand. They're trying to, they're, they're basically kind of jousting with the lead hands. But again, he's not changing levels, not dropping any feints. If you look at what Costa does, he even gives you a little bit of that head movement. He kind of just go, kind of sways from, see that sway from right, his right to his left. He's kind of changing the, he's looking for the angle change off of the head movement. And, and Burns is not really doing any of that. Stop, guys. Step back. Burns Fight. suffered the cut around his eye in his last fight. It's been a while. And you see some swelling under the left eye of the hammer from the fine work of Costa, who looks unmarked thus far. Yeah, and he's got the timing of Burns down pretty set pretty well at this point. So that's what, another reason why it's it's imperative on Burns to, to change something up, to change the speed of something, to change the look, to change uh, the, uh, the way he attempts to close that gap. 30 seconds on the clock, round number four. Got caught coming in by the right hand of Levi Costa. And, and there Burns tried to counter the jab with his own jab. And then of course Costa was able to, was already looking for that counter and so he was countering the counter. Costa said he fights for the knockout. And you see again, he came over the top of the jab with the right hook. That's because Burns is not fainting. So you know when he's reacting, you know he's throwing a punch. So you're already anticipating the punch he's throwing and you're ready to be able to time it. Instead of you, you faint right there, Costa's gonna make a false move or gonna counter something that's not there. Now you've got Costa out of position and from there you can actually punch, throw something else at him because now he's bitten on a faint. And that's what I mean about thinking your way to this thing. Look here at some of that action. You see, that that's exactly what I'm talking about there is the right hook over the top of the jab of Burns. Costa times it well. And, and of course, because by now he's got the speed down. He's got the speed, the, the speed of Burns and the which he throws his punches. He's got it pretty well timed in his head. Three minutes remain. A lot of support yeah. from the family of Josh Burns. And Burns is tough enough to, you know, to go through this. You know, they're motivating him by trying to, you know, give him inspirational words. But I don't know if Burns needs inspirational words. I think Burns' heart and, and, and character is unquestionable. I think it's, it's the tactical stuff that he needs. He needs the tactical instructions. And in tight, Costa doing good work. It's a fire fight now! 500 pounds plus of bare knuckle battlers. And what a start to the fifth and final round. Yeah, so he, he, he upped the ante a little bit on Costa, but again, is he gonna, is, is that, it, it's opened up an even bigger cut on him now, because again, Costa's still got the timing down. You would assume, but we know about judges' scorecards. I know, Paulie, but one would think that Costa would be ahead on the scorecards, and I Come think back, that gentlemen. the corner burns might feel the same way. So Josh, yeah, I, I trying mean, I, to take it out of the judges' I hands. Think, I think even Josh's family, they, 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 they <laughs> were trying to give him, uh, you know, inspirational words before he went out there. I, I, again, I, I, I don't find anything wrong with that, but I think it's the tactical stuff that Burns needs to work on here. I don't think it's question. You're going to question his card and character. He's, he's not, there's no sign of him wanting to be out of his fight, despite nope. the fact that he's probably way behind in it. Just looking for that one big punch to land. And Costa has him domesticated again after that quick start. Because again, even when even when Burns tried to up the ante a little bit, okay, he made it uncomfortable for a second, but he got caught with more shots. And just like there now, at a slow pace, you're gonna get caught with more shots again because you're not changing the tempo, you're not fainting. It's the same things I've been saying earlier. One fifteen remains in this heavyweight fight. Costa, nice jab connects. And you see again the rhythm of, of Costa. You see it looks swaying left to right, swaying from left to right. It's not just for defensive purposes. It's also to kind of mesmerize you and to not get it's an, and not giving you a hitch of when he's going to punch because he, he, his punches flow off that movement, so it comes out smoothly. And you can see it. it Burns cannot anticipate that jab coming to him. Big swing and a miss from the hammer. Stop, stop, stop. Two-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion, the Southpaw, Levi Costa. Josh the Hammer Burns. 
his 14th professional bare knuckle fight. 30 seconds remain. It's got to be now if you're the hammer. And Costa would be very smart to stay in this clinch here. Yeah, yeah, no danger here for Costa. Yep. Burns is gonna go the distance for just the second time in his bare knuckle career. And what an impressive BYB debut from Rio de Janeiro's Pitbull, Levi Costa. Yeah, good tactical fight. A spirited fight for both guys. Good entertaining stuff, good entertaining scrap, but Costa was, uh, it's not just a matter of uh, will, it's a matter of skill, as I've said before. And I think that's a Bruce Lee quote. <laughs> so I'm not gonna steal it. I'm gonna give him credit. See some of that action here. I think it was earlier in the round when Burns had first come out trying to fire everything on all cylinders, but it was a nice little stock and Yeah, there, right? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, and thank you, the when Stockton you, slap and deep, Polly. When your knuckles hurt, that's what yeah. you end up doing. <laughs> and in this stuff, your knuckles will hurt, bro. Trust, take it from me. You put a bunch of rounds in the bare knuckle, your knuckles start hurting. You start, you start throwing slaps without even realizing it. <laughs> Both Nick and Nathan will will tell you that I came up with the Stockton slap. I just should have trademarked it. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. You know what? We, we'll give you credit here. I appreciate it. Levi Costa, you can see why Mel Valenzuela was very excited to see him fight tonight. One of his training partners, a shout out to Mr. Wonderful, Phil Davis. Judges scorecards are in, here is Big Mo with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five full rounds of bare knuckle action inside the mighty Trigon, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. All three judges see the contest 50 to 44. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Levi Pitbull Costa. It's English. Levi Costa. By unanimous decision, there's our good friend Scott Burton, Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, Belfast, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna, I'm gonna pop in here with you. Our winner, Levi Costa, Levi. Maybe not, English good? <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll work through this, you and I together, all right? Levi Costa, first and foremost, Congratulations on your victory tonight. I'll start with an easy question. How does it feel? I, I feel amazing. Uh, I like the, the style of the, the ring, you know what I mean? Because it's in fight all the time. It's a war, you know what I mean? You were getting a lot of praise ringside from former world champion Polly Malinaggi on your angles. Were you working a lot on that? Did you know that your opponent was just gonna kind of come in the front door? Did you know you're gonna be able to catch him on the side? Yes. Yeah, Adrian, Adrian is, my, is my coach. We train a lot on angles, you know what I mean? Because we, we know uh, he's a, a, a knockout guy, you know what I mean? Then we will work on angles to, to, to try to survive. <laughs> what did you think about fighting inside the Trigon? Have you ever fought in a three-ringed arena before? Is this new? Did you like it? I love it. We're going to see you again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I'm excited to see that. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner, Levi Costa. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Levi Costa, for a great BYB debut. Ultra impressive on all the judges' scorecards. Victory goes to the Pitbull. Coming up next, it's a super middleweight matchup. Two men that we will see for the very first time inside the mighty Trigon. Rynell Riley and the legacy of God, Grigelis Cisneros. They will battle in a super middleweight battle from the Pines, coming up next.
October 21st, BYB Bare Knuckle returns to Rock Hill, South Carolina with a vengeance as Charlotte's preacher man, Joshua Oxendine, looks to avenge his loss to California bad boy, Mark the Shark Irwin, in a rematch for the BYB Lightweight Championship. That's not the only title on the line, though, as DJ Linderman returns to the Trigon to defend his BYB heavyweight belt against Rashad Daywalker Coulter. Don't miss these hard-hitting brawls and more. Visit BYBExtreme.com for tickets and information. Going to be a great rematch from Rock Hill, South Carolina. The Shark and the Preacher Man at BYB 21. BYB 19 continues our tale of the tape for this super middleweight matchup. Both men making their debuts. Riley Cisneros. Riley is seven years the elder, and he will have a significant five-inch reach advantage for the man from Ecuador. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth bout of the evening is scheduled for five three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the Trigon, Gregoris. Cisneros! Born in Venezuela, lives in Chicago, fighting out of Ecuador. His one bare knuckle fight was over a year ago in Ecuador on what was a mixed MMA card called Emma. It was July 30th, 2022. Cisneros also, just a few months ago, Paulie fought Cub Hawkins in MMA on an Anthony Pettis show. He was submitted by Cub in round number one. Well, we've seen Cub here. You know, oh yeah. One of the better athletes we've seen here at BYB. Second bare knuckle fight, BYB debut for the Venezuelan. Started fighting at age nine. He did it to help out his mom and his brothers. He is the youngest of six boys. Made his professional debut at age 15. Makes his BYB debut right here, right now. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Here is Rydell Riley. Different paths for different athletes to become a bare knuckle boxer. For Rynell Riley, born in Jacksonville, now lives in Pensacola. Being in Jacksonville meant being around the one, the only, the juggernaut, Lorenzo Hunt. Lorenzo Hunt got Riley into the bare knuckle world. Lorenzo, one of the, the, the most powerful and highly decorated bare knuckle boxers that we have present day. He enjoys fighting, does Riley, fights out of Fort Worth, Texas tonight. Says he's got speed, power, and he continues to improve his bare knuckle IQ with experience. Twenty twenty one was his first bare knuckle battle. He felt it was a sign it was a time to do it. And tonight he's in the Trigon for the first time. And with the official introductions, once again, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this super middleweight contest is scheduled for five three minute rounds and is brought to you by Miami Lux Detail Supply live on BN Sports. 
our referee in charge when the bell rings, Sam Burgos. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the white trunks with green and red trim, he stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 164.8 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of one victory versus no defeats. And he fights out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of Sucre, Venezuela. Damas y caballeros, presentando Gregoris, the legacy of God, Cisneros. And his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, he stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 164.2 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of one victory versus two defeats. And he fights out of Fort Worth, Texas, by way of Jacksonville, Florida, introducing the Black Rhino. Super middleweight matchup. Here we go. The Black Rhino, Rynell Riley in the black trunks. The legacy of God. Gregory Cisneros in the red and white trunks. Actually, he's representing with his trunks. Born in Sucre, Venezuela. He said he never reached the goals he wanted to in MMA. He found that bare knuckle opportunity in Ecuador, and he wants to roll with it. Oh, nice jab there by Riley. He's been pumping it out. Came up a little short originally, but now the last couple of jabs have hit Cisneros in the mouth. Riley had nearly 30 amateur boxing bouts a couple of professional glove boxing oh. fights but just the business of boxing wasn't there for him and so now years later he takes the gloves off and he's looking for a big win here oh right hand lands clean great combination by cisneros yeah, he landed too many punches when he was down i mean that was that was ridiculous that was ridiculous on the part of cisneros cisneros actually had a chance to win this fight right there. That was ridiculous. He hit him with like three punches when he was down. That's it. And Sam Burgess is all over. I can't, I can't even, I know they're gonna boo, but I can't even blame, I can't, yeah, DQ, yeah, I mean, I can't even blame the referee. Usually, yo, know, when they, when it's this quick, I, I'm usually angry at the referee, but, but this guy hit, this guy hit him when he was down, like, I mean, look at the, look at the replay. He's, he hit him a bunch of times when he was down. I mean, this ain't a street fight, bro. Nope. And again, another fighter like in the first fight that wastes all the good work he did. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously the fight had just started, so it wasn't a ton of good work. But Cisneros with a beautiful timed right hand that that, that caught Riley right there and, and drops him. And and you know, all, what do you? I mean, it was, yeah. momentum changer because he was getting hit with jabs. Riley was getting into a rhythm. This right hand, this right hand was really something of a, of, of a thing of beauty. He came out like a laser and and, and did the trick. And then what are you doing? You just keep throwing punches when he's down. I mean, he's down from the first shot already. Gave maybe, it away. The, maybe the second one, because he kind of held up a, a little bit when his legs buckled. Maybe the second one. But then he threw like a bunch more punches. Disqualification at just over a minute into the first round. Now he's got his flag and he's jumping around. Yep. And we were talking about yesterday on Pro Box. He's been as well as can punch. Well, yes, they can. This guy showed it too. I don't know if he's playing with a full deck. He's celebrating <laughs> like he won, but you know he lost. He did indeed. Yeah, he's saying he. I can see what he's telling his corner. What he was, he was up, but he wasn't up. And also, if you hold your hands, if you hold yourself up on all fours, where your legs aren't touching, the, your knees aren't down, but your hands are both on the ground, which Riley was, then technically you're down. You're down. I mean, you, the guy, your opponent's hands are down. You're down. So the Black Rhino, who did not, even with a victory, did not want to earn it in this fashion. And, and Ladies and gentlemen, 
Referee Sam Burgos calls his stop to this contest at one minute, four seconds of the very first round. Declaring your winner by a disqualification for hitting a downed opponent, the Black Rhino, Rhino Riley. And you see, I don't think that the qualification is exactly for a downed opponent. It's the repeated hitting of yes. a downed opponent. It's yes. very different. Because you hit him when he's down, you hit him once when he's down, and it's going to be okay. You're going to get a warning. There, it's, this guy repeatedly hit him. I mean, it's crazy. I want to see this replay. This is nuts. I was watching a beautiful right hand there. Beautiful time right time shot there. He's down right here. See, his hands are down. Okay, you got one, two, three. Bro, I mean, that uh, was really late, too. That's I mean, the, the one. That's but, the one that. But that's that the one that'll seal the deal. But you yeah. already two, you threw two more when he's down. That one right there, okay. But you threw two more when he was down. As when his hands are on the ground, he's down already. So you got away with throwing the first two. The first one, the, the one of them miss all together. One of them partially lands, but he's down, and you give a pause before the third one, and you throw the third one too. I mean, and you, 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 why don't you leave the referee no choice there? The one thing that we can both agree on, the one thing I will say, he's got an MMA background. And you can't punch. You can't kick, but you can punch a downed opponent. But, what, what, but you've got to have the discipline to know what you're doing tonight. But Goldie, what were you training in for this fight? Yeah, very, you know, don't you not camp for two months? Yep. You know, like, it. I don't know. You want know, to camp for two months during these things, you know? At least two months. Right now, Riley. By disqualification. And honestly, a lot of guys come from MMA and bare knuckles. Exactly. You don't see that often, often though. You don't see the, that kind of foul often. Four titles on the line tonight. Our first championship fight is coming up next. We will crown our first ever BYB featherweight world champion, Harold McQueen, Lightning, against the Buckeye, Brandon Burr. Our first title fight coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move on to our next contest, we here at BYB would like to send our condolences to two members and the entire family of the BYB community. Andon and Kevin Oliver, it was actually supposed to be Kevin's birthday today, left us far too young to drugs and violence. And now the Oliver family looks to spread awareness through their efforts in the bare knuckle and combat sports space through their gym intensity fighting in Indiana. So we would like to invite you all to participate in an honorary 10 count for those two children. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to the Florida Athletic Commission for the bell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to our next contest. Six three-minute rounds for the BYB Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the Trigon. Harold McQueen! Take a, take a 
He is Harold Lightning McQueen. And he made a major statement in his BYB debut in Rock Hill, South Carolina in May, not only beating, but beating down, respectfully, Pablo Caballero, very experienced bare knuckle fighter. It earned Lightning the knockout of the night honors. His background is all about boxing. He knew he wanted to be a fighter at around five years old. He watched his older brother train in the gym, taught him how to box. He knew this was his calling. A quarter finalist in the 2016 USA National Boxing Championships, now with the opportunity to become the first ever BYB featherweight world champion. Harold McQueen. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, please welcome Brandon Burr. McQueen is a natural featherweight in boxing weight, 126. Now Brandon Burr, fought MMA at 125, but he said it's been some time since he has done that, and in his fight against Y.L. Watson, which was his debut inside the Trigon, he bulked up to 135, Paulie, yeah. then fought Kendall Ward at around 130, so he's, he's adjusted to the weight, and like he told us, with an opportunity to become the very first BYB featherweight champion. The weight cut is something that he was not going to pass out. And, and these guys have been impressive. These guys have been impressive yeah. thus far here in the, in, in the times we've seen them. So it's uh, it's uh, it's an anticipated matchup here, and I look forward to seeing how it evolves and comes together. His wife, Victoria. Brandon and Victoria just celebrated their one-year anniversary. She is here. Harold Lightning McQueen looking for the big win, a big fan of Andre Ward. Our tail of the tape for our first title fight. This one in the featherweight division. 32-year-old Harold McQueen will have a two-inch and a two-inch reach and height advantage against Cleveland, Ohio's Brandon Burr. Title is on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is brought to you by the Galloway Group and is scheduled for six three-minute rounds and is for the BYB Featherweight Championship of the World. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with black trim. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 125.8 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of one victory versus no defeats. And he fights out of West Palm Beach, Florida by way of Oakland, California. Introducing Harold Lightning McQueen. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with black trim. He stands five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in at 125.2 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of two victories versus no defeats. And he fights out of Cleveland, Ohio. Introducing Brandon Slaughter. in charge when the bell rings, Bobby Wambacher. Title on the line, Bobby Wambacher, our referee. All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up if you want. Keep in mind, as we mentioned at the top of the show, the new rules sanctioned by the ABC, the Association of Boxing Council, makes this title fight Six three-minute rounds, not seven three-minute rounds. So round one of six. Black trunks for Brandon Burr. 
Got a little red, looks like a lot of design on the trunks of Lightning Harold McQueen. Burr has showcased his power in his two finishes thus far inside the Trigon. And McQueen showed a lot of speed and a good finishing power in his fight with Caballero as well. A little matchup here, because Burr is not the kind of guy that goes away that easily. Nope. And in and, and talking to Brandon Burr, Paulie, he was very complimentary of the speed, the skills, the boxing prowess of his opponent, Harold McQueen. Yeah, and this is where Burr wants to do the yes. work here against McQueen, is get, get, get in there and make it rough so that McQueen can't really be comfortable on the outside, because on the outside, McQueen has that advantage with his boxing ability and his very, very quick hands. See some redness on the right eye of Burr from probably those lightning jabs of McQueen. One thing I noticed at the bell, at the right before the bell, McQueen went back to his own corner and he had to be told to come back to step to the center, <laughs> you know, for the opening bell. He's just so used to the boxing and stuff. Absolutely. Nice moves there by McQueen as well. He goes back to center Trigon. This fight is at the natural weight of Harold McQueen trying to establish that long jab. So McQueen is difficult to deal with here. Yes. He's, his hands seem to stay sturdy. He's able to keep throwing those hard lightning shots. And also, he's got a, a very rhythmic boxing style. Which means that Brandon Burr can't wait on him. Yeah, exactly. You've got to make him uncomfortable. You've got to, you know, force the pace. But again, it's not easy to force the pace because he right. mixes in little feints and little th little little dips and little 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 level changes that slow down your pressure. Well, Burr he had to come in with the pressure there. Burr started wrestling at age stop, six. Guys, stop. Separate. Let go. Let go. Let go. One thing about Burr, though, I think he's gonna fight. make this a character fight, though. He's gonna he's gonna be in it for the long haul. You may be able to outbox him. He may have the advantage in the fight, but he's gonna make you keep working for it. And that's where we'll see if uh, McQueen is uh, there for the long haul as well. Because I was surprised at how easily he was able to dispose of Caballero, a guy who's used to being, uh, we're used to seeing, was pretty sturdy and a good fighter. Did that in round number two. Both stoppages, both victories for Burr have been in the second. Big swing and a miss from Slaughterhouse. Round one of a scheduled six coming to conclusion. Yeah, this, although it's a round for McQueen, Burr gets what he wants at the end of it in that, in that at least you get that little trench warfare. You want to start, because well, a guy like McQueen is a slick boxer. You, you, he gets uncomfortable. You make them uncomfortable fighting where they don't want to fight. Doesn't mean they can't fight there, but they prefer not to fight there. So McQueen, you know, he, he's got a toughness. He can fight on the inside, but, he, but he'd rather fight on the outside. So if you force the fight where he would really prefer, sometimes psychologically maybe get to him a little bit. See some of that action from that round. Nice combination there from McQueen. You see Burr making the key mistake they tell you never to make in boxing, going straight back. Yes. Going straight back there. And of course, McQueen's quick, quick, quick feet were able to follow him all the way through and land some extra punches in that salvo. Brandon Burr said, You've got to focus on the fight. You've got to focus on Harold McQueen. But when he takes a half a step back, he realizes how special this opportunity is for both men to become the very first, the inaugural BYB featherweight world champion. Round number two. Red trunks for Harold McQueen, black trunks for Brandon Burr. Working with his boxing coach, Alex Cooper, out of the strong style gym. His teammate, Chad Kelly, a victor to start our night. And of course, when you talk about strong style, and you talk about Cleveland, Ohio, Stipe Miocic, John Jones, November 11th at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Big fight that one. How good is that? Right hand by Burr. With the power possessed by Brandon Burr, he knows he's never really out of a fight. Trying to find his range. You see how the, the 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 awkwardness of McQueen and the athleticism of McQueen is he can change angles. You see he gives him that angle. He does a little spin around. Yep. And that can make it frustrating for Burr because again, when well, now you got to start all over again on the outside, or you can't really 
see and you and, and you got and you gotta start all over again against this guy with quick feet and a good jab and, and good angles. You work you work so hard to get inside and then you get put right back on the outside. It can be it can be frustrating and it, can it takes a lot of mental strength on the part of Burr to keep, keep consistent with this. Harold gives a lot of credit, the influence of his older brother getting him started. Huge fan of Andre Ward, and he just took a body shot from Brandon Burr. Who we'll return? But then McQueen returns fire there with the right hand, backs him off. You see Burr again. This is again, another psychological game. Yeah. You gotta do it though. You gotta do it. You gotta show that you're so strong. You gotta dig, dig anything you can. You know, but McQueen, it's not gonna bother McQueen, but at least you gotta make the attempt. Years ago in Pride, when Rampage picked a guy up like that, yeah, well, and you threw him down pretty down, down hard. Good jab again by McQueen. And you see again the different looks. Look at him. He gives level changes. He touches. He faints. You see, he gives you yep. a different look on that. It's it's tough to keep up with because again he's got so much speed that he can fire off of all those looks, and that's what makes a guy dangerous. When he can give you these looks, is one thing, but he can also fire off of all the looks. So you you've got to constantly be aware, no matter what looks he's giving you. And Paulie, he said he wants to showcase his skills a little more tonight, but he just felt the power of his opponent, Brandon Burr. And that's the stubbornness of Burr, and that's what I mean about it. You gotta, you gotta, the longer you can keep this in for the long haul, which Burr is, 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 is battle-tested, maybe you can, you know, kind of bring McQueen little by little into a trench where he might not want to be, or he might, maybe he may not be as comfortable being in there. Brandon Burr said this means everything. To be the first champion inside the Trigon at Featherweight, good finish to this round. Another McQueen round, but at least Burr has something to take back to the corner with him to maybe possibly give himself some confidence coming into the next, the third, the, the next round, which I think is the third one. See the action there. This was the right hand that Burr landed towards the end of the round. This, Burr had a little bit more success at the end of the round. That was a good right hand on his part as McQueen was up against the ropes. If he can land a little bit more consistently, let's see if the body language of McQueen starts to change or if maybe the, it, it, it impacts his ability to make certain decisions, which he was making so fluidly before, or make him dominant, you know? You make a guy second guess his natural ability, because McQueen fights a lot on natural ability. Maybe you can start to turn the fight around, but it's very important here for Burr to get off on the right side in the round three, because my think McQueen may come out and try to take back the advantage. And Brandon Burr's always said constant pressure is one of his biggest strengths. And he wants to put that pressure on Harold McQueen in the red trunks, Brandon Burr in the black trunks. ABC had their convention just last week. The Association of Boxing Council. Some rule changes, including all championship oh, wow. fights, are now a maximum of six rounds. So six by three for the men, like tonight. And when we see Patty Juarez and Monica Medina in Biloxi, it'll be six two-minute rounds. Watch the back of the head. Burr told us he brought in a very good boxer into the camp, a South American champion, fast hands, fast movement. Let's see if he can showcase some of the things that he learned in training in the strong style gym in Cleveland. So round three, title fight scheduled for six. I'm noticing Burr's keep getting hit with that combination. It's, starting, it's that right hand lead and then the jab. It's a two one instead of the one two. You see how McQueen is starting to finish the combination with a strong jab. And it, he uses the initial com the initial right hand to as a deceptive punch, get a little closer, and then he, it's like a shotgun jab. And and McQueen and Burr ends up going straight back on the initial deceptive punch. So that way the he ends up being in the path of the shotgun jab when McQueen uses it to get close. He looked for it there, he threw the right hand there, but he wasn't able to get off the, the shotgun jab. But again, Burr is going straight back and he's got to kind of slide to the left or right and try to counter from there. Instead, he goes straight back and he's gonna keep paying the price if he does that, as McQueen again, using that shotgun jab as the second shot of the combination. Body shots from close range from Burr. It's cut now. Yeah, oh, he's been cut. He's got a lot of the swelling starting to come up. 
Brandon Burr had him working in the clinch, dirty boxing, and kind of stepped out. And McQueen landed a punch. 45 seconds, round number three. McQueen, eight and one in his amateur boxing career, was ranked number five as an amateur at one time. His only loss was on that path for a national championship back in 2016. McQueen now turning southpaw. And I used the left cross there to turn back to the right-handed stance. Cut right in the middle of the forehead of Brandon Burr, one of a few. This fight has been a McQueen 101 fight so far, Paulie. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, I'll go as far as to say McQueen might be the most skilled boxer in BYB. I mean, he's showing a lot of the repertoire. I mean, this is, and, and it's combined with his speed as well. He shows there's a lot of deception there in his style, but also his speed combined with com comes together very well, you know? He hasn't had been tested quite yet at a high level because he's pretty much dominated the two guys who've seen him. But I'm gonna say right now, Caballero was known as a difficult opponent and he blew him away. Yeah. And Burr is known as a difficult opponent and he's making this look easy right now. That was a good shot there by by Burr. So we gotta show it The Queen seemed unfazed yeah, and you see by McQueen, those body shots. The Queen making the uh, defensive move, slides, pivoting, and then dipping underneath that hook. He, even if you land something in the midst of the exchange or in the midst of the combination, he's not going to let you let it put him out of position. A lot of times you land a big shot on somebody, it puts them out of position, and they can be here with the follow-up. The Queen is the kind of guy, even if you hit him, he doesn't let himself get put out of position. So even the follow-up to that initial shot, unless it hurts him, which he hasn't, we haven't seen him hurt, he's still able to slip and slide and pivot and, ro and roll out, out from out of the way and actually sometimes even set you up for the counters on top of that. Doctor takes a look at the cut on the bridge of the nose. Uh, Brandon Burr says he's good to go and our championship fight continues. First of four belts on the line here tonight. You see you see what McQueen did there. When Burr rushed him, he held his ground and punched, as opposed to when when, when, when McQueen rushes Burr, Mc, Burr goes back, goes straight back. You saw the difference there in the, in, in the difference. He right there, Burr, Burr goes straight back when McQueen comes at him. McQueen said that Brandon Burr, while he respects him as a fighter, he's not a striker for real. And what Brandon Burr said, is he needs to focus on getting inside, working his clinch game, dirty boxing, which he has not been able to do so thus far. Mike Goldberg, the former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, my powerful partner, Paul Imolinaji, coming to you from the Charles F. Dodge City Center in the Pines in South Florida. Berlaining a couple of jabs there in those exchanges and managed to get himself close. This fight for the Featherweight World Championship. Police Gazette diamond belt fight still to come. The GOAT is back against San Liera. That punch hurt him. And the very least, There's that power. And in the very least, Bird's going to remain viable. And he's going to remain there. He's going to make your life hard, even if you're going to beat him. Said earlier, Paul, he always says with his power, he's one punch away from either finishing or turning things around. Know, and that punch got the attention. Something wound up on the desk of our Spanish broadcast. I don't know if it's a mouthpiece or a, or a tooth. Somebody lost something. Huh? Looks like the corner of, of McQueen. McQueen may have lost a mouthpiece with that shot. And some, some of Burr's pressure may finally be getting through a little bit. Well, he, he definitely has gotten the shot that has changed the mindset a little bit of his opponent, Harold McQueen. He now knows he is truly in a fight. And again, just skimmed by with that left hand. So it was the mouthpiece of Harold McQueen. No, no, let's go. Come here. Bobby Wambacher puts it right back in. Gets him right back into the action. 
So you want to be a bare knuckle boxing commentator. Watch out for flying mouthpieces. And flying blood. Yep. Best round of the fight for Brandon Bird. Yeah, he's managed to get a little closer in this round and managed to make it count a little bit. Got some blood stains here. We got. Oh yeah. That's why we go Johnny Cash on these shows. Yeah. For six, the ABC rules that were just sanctioned follow in form of the Police Gazette rules that have been used for the past several years. The leader of the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, our friend Scott Burt, Belfast, New York, one of the members of the committee to vote on the change to limit championship fights for the men to a total of 18 minutes. Black trunks for Brandon Burr, red trunks for Harold McQueen. Burr landed with his power in the last round. Let's see if he can do it again. Maybe an open hand. Open hand, yeah. Brandon saying how many times? Yeah, and that's one of sometimes a habit of a boxer when you try to use that probing shot. You don't you don't always close your hand. Of course, in here it's a bit more dangerous because you, you can poke the eyes out. Absolutely. Burr has, a, Burr has a, a legitimate beef. Burr with a lot of pressure now. Uppercut. McQueen's in the corner. Burr's on to get a little closer now. Yep. Oh, nasty. That, nice job. Got that, that clinch working, pulled the head down, and threw the punch up. And that's, uh, that's what Burr wants to do. Burr wants to be close so he can take effect with that little, little hook there by McQueen. McQueen is going to keep trying to be creative on the outside. But one thing I'm so noticing, McQueen is a little less active on the outside. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I fought Baron Uncle once. When you have, fight with that kind of speed and you're ripping jabs off the face of your opponent, your hand starts to really hurt. I'm not going to say it's McQueen's jabbing less because his hand's hurting, but I'm telling you, when you throw those speed jabs consistently, your hands start to hurt and you start to throw less of them. May lead to the open hand, though, Paul, and much yeah, to your point. No, exactly, it's there too. And the problem I had was I broke the other hand, so I, right. I only had one hand, and the one I was using the, with the jab was starting to hurt more and more. And I think, I think now Burr's starting to find a home for that little tie clinch. He's still not able to land that uppercut quite cleanly, but you see that mouthpiece keeps coming out from, from um, the mouth of McQueen. Why is that? He's getting a little tired. Yes. He's getting his mouth open. In a little bit winded, he's breathing with his mouth open, and the shots are knocking the mouthpiece out of his mouth. He's going to risk taking to get a point taken out of it to keep coming out. And as our Pro Box TV partner Chris Algieri would say, you can't get your mouthpiece at Models. Nah, not yet. <laughs> not in this kind of thing. Not if you want to, if you want to keep your teeth. Not if you can find a Model still. Brandon Burr. Big round four, pouring it on. In tight here in round five. Slaughterhouse picking up the pace. We got ourselves a fight. Time out. Time out. Over there. Oh, this could be a big point. If he gets, if he loses a point. Wait right there to pull me. We okay? Good. All right. Give me one second. Okay. Let's see. This could be a big point here. I can't keep warning you. I cannot keep warning you. Open, open hand. One point, I poke. Yeah, this could be come really into play now. Yes. Poke. Remember, there's a championship fight, One so this is six rounds. And there's been no knockdown, so we haven't seen a 10-8. And McQueen was pretty Brandon, comfortably ahead in the first three, but the fourth right. was pretty competitive. They could have went to Burr. And now five is going to Burr by two points. Might have an even fight going into round six here, Goldie. No. 
Right, this is what it's all about. Burr. This was a definitive burr round. I mean, yeah. This As be, I believe last one was too. Yeah, this would be 10 ah! I think I think four was a little closer, but because a lot of times the judges will give it to the other guy because it, the other wasn't as dominant. You know right. What I mean? Right. So if they could have won either way, you're automatically psychologically you're gonna you're gonna like, just give it to the other guy. And um, I think maybe if that's the case, I mean, we, we might have an even fight here, and then it might be all to fight for in round six. Three minutes remain. We will find out who is the inaugural BYB featherweight world champion, unless with the 10 8 in math. Well, I'm not even going to say it. Well, with the 10 8 now, it's going to eliminate, even if you're tied three rounds apiece, it's going to eliminate the draw because now the 10 8 would, would make it, uh, if it's tied in rounds, it would make an advantage birth. You know? so, so for McQueen to win this fight, he either needs a knockdown himself or he's got to. He's got to win this round. He's got to win them four to two in rounds, and he won by a point because of the 10 8 round that he lost. And Burr making the sign that the strap is going to be his. Sixth and final round. Yeah, you got to credit Burr here. He's fought himself back into this fight. And, that, and it was one power shot that kind of changed everything. Yeah. And we don't know the condition of the hands of Harold McQueen, much to your point, Paulie. Yeah, he's been a lot less active, and it's made Burr. See, Burr has nothing coming back at him now, so he's getting more, even more and more aggressive. Weathered the boxing storm, and now Watch he is fight. making this a brawl. Yeah, and even and notice, even when, when McQueen makes Burr miss, he's not a lot of counterpunching there. So, again, that you're doubting your own hands because they may be hurting you. And if you got nothing to make you doubt coming forward, you're going to keep throwing. What's the worst that happens? You just miss? McQueen is tough. Oh, and another again. one. Time out. There it is again. That could be tough. That's not me, that's you. Yeah. Time. I've that seen way too many of these yeah, in the last 25 years. And that, yeah, that would happen uh, uh, in, in the UFC. What's guy name lost his eye, right? Yeah, yep, Michael Bisbee. Bisbee. Yep. Yeah, and, and it's also a fatigue factor. It's auto, it's it's you on auto when you when you're in fatigue mode, you're an automatic pilot. And a lot of times in boxing, you'll you'll kind of keep that hand open and probe it. And it, it's it's getting to the point now where it, it, this may end up costing McQueen the fight here. Those fingers aren't a factor with gloves on, yeah, with but, boxing gloves yes. on, not MMA, of yeah, course. Exactly. So now you know. I mean, you gotta you gotta abide by that rule. And of course, in the heat of battle, that, that eye poke can really come into play. Who knows if Burke can even go on? Let's see. At this point, you're fighting in a must-win round. Yes. If you're Bird, do you take a chance to keep fighting, or do you say you can't see? Because if you're not 100% yourself here, and you've got to fight the rest of the round, then you've got to win, and now you've got to try to win a round where you may not be able to see that well, and it may cost you the round, and then you lose the fight. Or... If you say, hey, man, I can't see well, they stopped the fight here. And, you know, you may win the fight, especially if if if, if uh, McQueen's about to lose another point. Or you just do what Sam Liera does. Yeah. Or you, did against do LT. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was crazy. Michael Bisbing does, right? Yep. <laughs> Obviously, he kept fighting. He did for a long time. Jason Perillo changed the entire style of Michael Bisping after the significant damage to his eye during his active MMA days. Up to five minutes to attend to Brandon Burr, the doctors taking a look at the eye. Oh, yep. Yeah. And that hand was wide open, Paulie. And, and yeah. Burr said it had happened earlier, and you see multiple eye pokes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Brandon was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And from that super slow-mo, nice job in the truck, guys. Yeah. You can, uh, you can clearly see. Here's another one. Oh, um, yep. Two fingers that time. Well, we are in the sixth and final round. 
So we would go to the scorecards and it doesn't seem like any type of disqualification is happening. But can he continue? Or will it come down to a potential technical decision? Knowing Brandon Burr, he wants to continue to fight. But fighter safety is paramount, always number one, and they're going to stop it. The doctor is going to stop the fight. Multiple eye pokes, a point deducted from Harold McQueen. And an eye poke finishes this fight, unfortunately, due to an eye injury that was too significant for Brandon Burr to overcome and continue to fight for the belt. So what happens? Is it uh, uh, accidental? Does it go to the scorecards? Is it a DQ? How, how does this, how does it get scored now? I I would uh, I I would have assumed that the DQ might have come much earlier if they were going to do it because why look at the eye of Brandon Burns yeah. and see if he wants to continue to fight, right, Paulie? Yeah, yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. So we're deep enough into it that it's in the hands of the judges. There was the point deducted, and you can. Just from hearing Harold McQueen will be back, stuff happens. I think he has a feeling that Slaughterhouse is going to be the one with the strap. Yeah, the the point, the point deductions may have sealed it. Yes. Especially if there's one. I don't know if there's one um, here. I don't know if you scored this last round. I don't know if there's all the points because that could come into really, uh, could be a key factor in the final scoring of the fight. Because I had this fight even going into the last round. But, you know, the last round yep. is, is key, uh, would be key on my score. Card. Ladies We're gonna and find gentlemen, out right now. referee Bobby Bobacher calls a stop to this contest at 55 seconds of the sixth and final round. Declaring your winner by disqualification, the Doc Stoppage and the new BYB featherweight champion of the world, Brent. Makes Brandon BYB Burr. history. He is the first ever featherweight world champion inside the Trigon. Brandon Burr, Warrior. Very fitting nickname of Slaughterhouse. Still look good. Don't worry about it, man. Hey, you now have a belt around your waist. Brandon, how does it feel? Hey, man, it fucking hurts to have this belt around my waist. I'll tell you that. That was a good fucking fight. Man, Harold, great fucking fight. Man, we were putting it all out there, man. You were busting me up. It was unfortunate how it ended. I want to get a rematch. I want to get a rematch when, whenever we're ready. At BYB, if that's the plan. I'd love to get another one in, man. True champion. And I want to say thank you, everybody, for coming out. First 120 pound, 126 pound champion. More to come. Now, Brandon, you're a fighting champion. You offered the rematch. I mean, you you came in and, and like, whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't see that one coming, literally. I guess that's somebody's challenging. Yeah. For the title. And the people's champ is Ladies and sure gentlemen, one more time for your winner. That that someone is no longer going to be in the Trigon. Quinones is throwing them out. Oh, of course, the people's champ taking care of the people. But let it let it not take away from this monumental moment because Brandon Burr has made BYB history. He is the first ever featherweight world champion. And yeah, let's see a rematch because Harold McQueen was showing great respect from his corner. From what I said about Burr at the beginning of the show, I said he's not a, he has not afraid to taste his own blood to get a victory. And tonight he's proved exactly that. I, I, really got, I recognize that in his other fights. Is that this guy doesn't mind. There's people, there's fighters in this sport where you start busting them up, you can see them just yeah. fade away. 
it's gonna take a lot more than blood and lumps to make Burr fade away. He's gonna key, he's gonna make you earn it. And he may break you down in the process, and that's what he did tonight. And I love what he said to Big Mo. He said, you know what? It hurts yeah. to win this championship belt, but it's gonna feel good to take it home to Strong Style Jim. Brandon Burr, victorious DQ Doc Stoppage in the sixth and final round. I don't know if that call out went as, as it was supposed to go for whoever wanted intended the call out to have. Yeah. <laughs> well, it went the right way for Isaiah Kionis. I didn't get a good look. Do you know what I, it was? I, I'm not sure either. <laughs> we'll find out. Thank you to the UIB security, Isaiah Kionis. Coming up next, diamonds are on the line. It is BYB against BKB. Well, even Scott Burke got a push in there. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he pushed them off too. He got mad. Scott Bird, I mean, he's got a he's got a rep. <laughs> James Canelli and Laurent T. Smash Nelson. That bite for the Police Gazette Super Middleweight Diamond Belt is next. Saturday, September 16th, Bare Knuckle Fighting returns to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum in Biloxi for BYB 20. Our main event is the highly anticipated rematch for the BYB Women's Lightweight Belt between the champ, Patty Juarez, and Biloxi's own, Monica Medina. All the fights happen inside BYB's patented Mighty Trigon, the smallest fighting surface in combat sports. Visit BYBExtreme.com today for tickets and information. The people's champ <laughs> with some good defense of our Trigon here tonight. We have one champion now, it is Diamonds on the line. Tail of the tape for this super middleweight matchup for the vacant Police Gazette Diamond Belt. Laurent T. Smash Nelson takes his fight on 10 days notice, replacing Desmond Green against the Brit and the reigning BKB lightweight champion. Lightweight is 12 stone in Britain, so 168 pounds. James Kennelly from Birmingham, England. Fight scheduled for five three minute rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to our viewers joining us on Be In Sports. Our next contest is scheduled for five three minute rounds and it's for the vacant Police Gazette Diamond Super Middleweight World Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to the Trigon, James Canelli. James Kennelly. Yes, there was a confrontation between Smash and Kennelly at the weigh-ins yesterday morning, but in the fighter interview, Kennelly's a very pleasant, I guess in England you could say pleasant lad, right? <laughs> he did say that he spoke to Rico Franco, Ricardo Franco, who is one of the BKB champions that Smash has finished. Canelli said, wait, he's beaten three former champions. I am a reigning champion from a family of boxers. He did give props to LT, he said, and he's right. Too tough for his own good. Oftentimes needs to be saved from himself. And James Canelli said, smash, LT would get a phone call in the morning, get out of bed, and show up to fight. Canelli has faced very high level competition. He has encountered two fights in one night, one of them against the great Sean George. He also said, Paulie, the gloves to me weighed me down. So I like going bare knuckle. BKB champion, the truth, James Canelli.
And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, here is the Rob T. Nelson! Confirmed on Monday of last week. Smash is a very pleasant lad as well when you're not in a fist fight with him. Or that way when you're taking the art of nine limbs with headbutts. He said that Canelli called him a shit talker and <laughs> Smash said, you're talking about the wrong guy. Like, that, that is not me. He did compliment his opponent, saying he's a very clean boxer. He is very technical. Smash considers himself a technical brawler, intelligently aggressive. Self-motivated, always prepared, and looking to defeat a fourth BKB champion, common opponent in Nathan DeCastro. Nelson defeated De Castro when we were at the Indigo at the 02 in October of last year. It was Nathan De Castro who Canelli defeated to win the BKB lightweight championship. Here's Laurent T. Smash Nelson. With the official introductions of our second title fight, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, live on BN Sports, this bout is scheduled for five three minute rounds for the vacant Police Gazette Diamond Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And it's brought to you by Buy Cell Clothing. Let's meet the fighters first. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, he stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 166 pounds. He comes to us with a professional bare knuckle record of five victories versus four defeats. And he fights out of Birmingham, England, introducing the current reigning British Police Gazette bare knuckle champion and the BKB World. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with green trim, he stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 164.4 pounds. Yep. He fights out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, by way of Peter Maritzburg, KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. Yep. This man has competed in 13 professional kickboxing bouts, nine professional boxing bouts, 17 professional MMA bouts, two Muay Thai bouts, and three lead way fights, and comes into the Trigon with a bare knuckle record of three victories versus one defeat. Introducing Laurent T. Smash Nelson. Our referee in charge, Sam Burgos. All right, gentlemen, you get this stuff in your back. Obey my command, protect yourself at all times. Right here is good, right here is good. Any question? Talk to me if you like. Scheduled for five rounds for the vacant super middleweight Police Gazette Diamond Belt. 57th professional combat fight for Smash here tonight. These guys can fight, man. This is gonna be good. This is going to be outstanding. Here we go. Colorful trunks by Smash. Black trunks for the truth. James Kennelly. Kennelly's been a boxer since age 10. So a little bit of respect here early in the fight. That's because both guys know that the other one knows how to fight. Yes. See uh, Laurenti trying to come in behind some head movement. You see Connolly looking to use some of those feints. Beautiful. 
He's a national champion, two-time Midlands champion, is an amateur with the gloves on. It was to be Desmond Green. Unfortunately, Desmond could not fight tonight. And Smash, of course, answered the phone and said, yep, to Mel Valenzuela. Good right hand followed up by Kennelly. Yeah, and he followed with another nice combination once he landed the initial right hand. Partially blocked by Laurent T, but nonetheless, good shots there. There's some contact there for Connolly, which can boost his own confidence. And again, a different looks is pro that Connolly's given is preventing Nelson from you know finding the target. One interesting thing that James Canelli said during the fighter interviews that with the change to bare knuckle and we, we saw potential damage to the hand of Harold McQueen, thus the, the eye pokes unfortunate in our last fight, he said, oh, hit stop, stop. nose down, yeah. which makes sense because you don't want to go off the skull because that'll break it. Oh yeah, good point. And he just did so, nice three punch combination. Yeah, you can tell Nelson's trying to grab that tie plum. But Canelli is, is making it difficult by giving a little bit of head movement, even on the inside. And a big, long jab. Nelson's going to rely on pressure, and that's what he does. You, yep. The more you hit him, the more he increases the, the gears of, of, um, of pressuring you. He always says it takes one punch to wake me up. Well, he's awake now. Yeah, it's something I've noticed with Lamar T. Nelson. A lot of his opponents have success early with him, and then he just keeps increasing the pace the more success that they have to the point where they stop having success and the assault increases. So I guess you can start seeing Nelson's pressure has increased oh, uh, after some of the early success Canelli has had. He's not able, Nelson's not been able to land anything clean yet, but he's increased the pace here. As Canelli's throwing some big shots as well. We're gonna have exactly what oh, we expected. Big punch landed late in the round. Good hook. Yep. Hey, you good? Like I said good. to me. Good, good, good hook by Canelli. I was just going to say I have Canelli eking this round out. Well, now I have Canelli winning a two-point round. With yes. Um, I had him winning it just, just by a, a, a tight margin before that knockdown. Got himself the extra, got himself the extra point. The nice left hook. And you see what it is right there, throws a right hand, which kind of whizzes by Laurentine Nelson. But what happens when he goes whiz by like that, your, your hips are now cocked. It's almost like cocking the gun, and now, you, you know, like the shotgun, and now your hips are now cocked, and you have more leverage to throw that left hook. And he came right around with that left hook, boxing style, and that leverage on that left hook that he could develop, that momentum that he developed from missing the right hand, was able to land and detonate the chin of Laurentine Nelson Malby, for the knockdown. Throw the corner, gentlemen, right here. Huh. Round number two, this Police Gazette championship fight, super middleweight Police Gazette diamond belt scheduled for five. Big right hand over the top by Kennelly. Scored the knockdown in the final seconds of round one. Canelli's got a little bit of an awkward rhythm himself, and, yeah. it, and, and it ends up protecting him a little bit. You know, he ends up you know, making Laurent T. Nelson's pressure hesitate just a little bit, and it's just a little bit enough to where Canelli can come up with some ideas. Or smother like this. Smash trying to do exactly that. Smash him, and man, you can see the boxing background of Canelli. Yeah. Very clean, Pauly. Yeah, very sharp one, too. They're at close range. Body shots from Smash in the clinch. And this is where Canelli will not have been used to is the, is the inside fighting. Until you consider the the fact this is his 10th professional oh. bare knuckle fight, his first inside the Trigon though. And again with a straight right hand, answered this time by Smash. And that's the thing, good jab there by Canelli, but Ron Nelson's pressure increasing and increasing. So far Canelli's finding the exit. Just enough to, you know, keep 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 some uh, keep some breaks in between the exchanges. They're fewer and further between now. Yes. 
Read a great article on James Kennelly. He said, battles, brawls, and all out boot to boot wars, you name it, Kennelly's resume will stand testament to have lived, breathed, and suffered the broken knuckles in exchange for victory and notoriety in this brutal trade. Oh, yeah. It is. It's well written. Oh, yeah. I'd like to take credit for it, but. Stop, 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 stop. That one I read online. <laughs> He changes his stance. Come on, come on, let's go, let's Southpaw for just a moment. Come on, gentlemen, let's go. Nelson, let's go, let's go. you can see, very diligent about closing the gap, closing that distance now, Paulie. Yeah, nice right hand there again by Canelli. Canelli does a good job of creating just enough space, go, go, falling go, in with on. a sharp one, too. And then what he does, he falls in and he takes away the space from, from Laurent Nelson to, to be able to come back with punches. James Canelli. Five and four overall of the four setbacks. He has only been stopped once. Stop, stop, no throw, let him go. Stay back, stay back. Nelson has never been stopped. His lone loss to Sam Liera went the distance. A little closer, but it's Nelson forcing Canelli. He's starting to force Canelli to fight more and more when Canelli doesn't want to fight. And so when you lose the ability to decide when it's time to fight and when it's not time to fight inside a trigon, inside a ring, inside a cage, now you lose control of the fight and you lose control of the pace of the fight. And that can that can not only wear you down physically, it can also wear you down psychologically as well. So because now you realize if you want to win this fight, you're going to fight it on the terms of your opponent and not on your own terms. It's a little bit of a, of a weird mind maze you put yourself in. But let's see how round, round, round three goes, because through round two, you know, Canelli was still relatively competitive, although LeBron Nelson's pressure may have eaten that round out for him. Of course, Sam Liera will fight in our main event of the evening. Interim champion against returning champion from a shoulder injury, Jose Fernandez, Sam Liera. Super middleweight title fight still to come. And the welterweight title fight, Andre Yule, Carlos Alexandre. This one continues for the Police Gazette Diamond Belt, round three. Colorful trunks by Smash. Black trunks by Birmingham, England's James Kennelly. Smart on Kennelly to use that jab on the outside. You see, he tries to give that different look here. And then you see when, when Laurent T. Nelson gets close, he tries to smother him and then create a yeah, clinch, take go. away the stop, ability stop. for Laurent T. Nelson stop. To, stop. to work. So this way, the only real work that's being done are the, the little sharp shots like this from Canelli on, on the outside. Canelli said he always puts the work in, Paulie. Win or lose, he said, I've never had to look back and say I wasn't ready. Came here about a week ago, came early by himself. He said, you know what, I'm coming here to work, coming here for business. Nelson now cut from some of those jabs by Canelli. Then Canelli switches to Southpaw again. Smash keeping the hands busy here. Scheduled for five. Mike Goldberg, the match man, Paulie Molinacci. In our home in South Florida, good body no, no, shot stop. from Laurent T. And I think, you know, the level of Canelli, he's, he's got one or two shots at a time, and then he looks to clinch. It's almost like uh, the John Ruiz style, the way he yeah. used to fight. You know, he's like, shot here, shot there, and then it would clinch or hold the rest of the time. And the judges would have to score just a cleaner shot, which would be by Ruiz. He beat a lot of world-class fighters that way. Canelli almost doing that to Laurent Nelson at times, but if it's just if Laurent Nelson continues to put this much pressure and there's less and less coming back from Canelli, like right there, Laurent wound up in a clinch where Canelli didn't offer up any resistance at all. And now he's starting because of that, he's starting to get warned, you know? So he's gotta be careful here. You can do it, but you're playing a you're walking that tightrope. Again, uh, he wound up in a clinch where there was no resistance from Canelli from throwing any punches before the clinch. And let's not forget a very important fact. This is the first time that Canelli has fought in the Trigon. Yeah, and this is the kind of fight you fight in the Trigon. Yes. Under these uh, American rules, the inside fighting. Good right hand there by Canelli, partially blocked. So that Laurent room Nelson. that he generally might have, Paulie, does yeah. not exist yeah. inside the smallest surface in combat sports. Big right hand, though, followed by a left, straight punches. As advertised so far. Yeah.
Ginelli, Ginelli lost the mouthpiece. A couple times he's had to put it back in himself. And you can see Ginelli, the, the, the sand's the sand almost running out of the hourglass, but he's just resisting just enough to keep the respect going here. And at the bow, he's throwing these shots. Okay, Laurent T. Smash Nelson. It appeared, Paulie, he almost let him throw that right hand to show him, you're not strong enough to knock me out. Well, Nelson's chin is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he goes down a lot, but it's like, when he plays, it's, it's very difficult to get, to get him out of the fight. But again, these rounds are competitive because it's there's a lot of clenching in there, and then some of the cleaner shots are being landed by Canelli. And that good right hand there by Canelli, and then back with his own jab. And then Nelson comes in, he misses there. But watch at the end of the round. Let's see, see, Laurent Nelson's work is not. Now landing. look, he sits up. Right there. Boom. Right there. Boom. Oh, that was right on the chin. But Smash is like, hey, yeah, he's good, he's good. you got any more for me? <laughs> well, let's see here. I'm sure Canelli's saying, yes, I do. But well, let's see. if there's a little working. mental warfare, I think we just got a point for Smash. And look, Laurent goes right up to him and starts working right away. And I think he's even realized he's just trying to break him down. And this is a title fight, right? Goldie, six Absolutely. Rounds. Five rounds for this one, Police Gazette. Oh, OK, for Police Gazette, five rounds. There we go. Part of it, the short notice. Although, Smash said, hey, on, I, I, I'll Let play you 10 go. rounds. And, yeah. and when Smash says that, I, I believe him. Go, right? He's stop, one of those stop, types. Stop. But this is a five-rounder for the vacant Police Gazette Diamond Belt at Super Middleweight. Stop, 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 you see kind of Canelli's legs aren't holding him up as much anymore, even in that, in that physical work. You see he's getting more and more uncomfortable. Getting a little arm weary, and he's being outworked here. Oh, stop, 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 stop. And also the body language of the fight. It doesn't look yes. good for Kennelly. That's what Kennelly has to be careful. Maybe landing some of the cleaner shots at times and then forcing clenches, but the body language of the fight affects the judges as well. Good jab there by Kennelly. The body language of the fight shows that, you know, it's Laurent T. Nelson in, 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 in charge, and a lot of these body shots are also doing some good work. Oh, good hook there by Kennelly, and that's what he needed. He needed to back off Laurent T. Nelson there. Remember, he does have a two-point round in this fight already. He exactly. One. If he can get another one, it would really, really help his cause. This is a great fight, as we expected it would be. He's working the body still. Through the ropes, but disciplined. Nice move there by Canelli defensively. Still a lot of time on the clock here in round number four. Come on, guys, let him go. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Let's go. The dirty boxing of Laurent T. Smash Nelson becoming a huge factor as and we go on. And there can only literally grab him with two hands. So he's got to be careful. He doesn't lose points here. Got to try to smother without making it look obvious. Oh, good body shot by Nelson. And again, just another typical yeah, smash fight. Him with two hands. And that's, yeah, so you made it too Over obvious here. there. You got you can't make it as obvious. Losing points for Hogan. Yeah, he had, he had, that's the thing. You know, I saw that, he was right above me. I saw he, he extended both hands to grab this Nelson. Fight, you got to make it look subtle. I can see what Canelli's trying to do, but he's got to make it look a little bit more subtle here. Come on, guys, stop, 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 stop. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Nelson is not looking to hold at all in there. No. Nelson's looking to work in there. This is where Laurent T wants this fight. Yeah, you see right there. Canelli's trying to get a break, but no, no breaks by Nelson. Final seconds of round number four. You knew they were going to fire away in these final 10 seconds. Oh. Yeah, and again, a physically, ah! physically debilitating fight, too. And these clenches, pushing around. You know, it's a physically, physically debilitating fight. I don't realize, I think Laurent realizes that it's, there's round five still coming up. Oh, that was a point. Point is up. Yeah, point is up. Right? Oh.
Johnson probably got back the 10-8 round there that he lost in round one with that point loss, that point deduction. Yep, just Canelo. confirmed with the referee. Yeah. It was a point deduction. You so you're right, there's your 10-8. Yeah, they got a 10-8 for Canelli in round one, a 10-8 for Nelson in round four. It's all up in two and three, right? Yes, sir. Could be that five is all the fight for you. Three minutes in remain. You might have split two and three. Touch him, touch him. All right, set back, let's go. So the 10 eights even out, come on, guys, and it come may on, come down right, to right, this right, final right, stop, two minutes stop, stop. and 47 stop, stop. seconds. Who will leave with the beautiful oh, police right gazette there, right. super middleweight diamond belt? Good right hand there by Canelli. I think it knocked out the mouthpiece of, of, of Laurentine Nelson. Big shots again. Canelli doing some work that could maybe win this last round. That's a real big salvo, especially big in, 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 a, in a fight where big salvos have been few and further between because of the clinchy work. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Hey, stop. Let's go. What a fight. You see that it's some of that. Let's go, let's go, let's go. A clinching attempt by 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 Canelli. It's more like it's more negative work than anything else. More neutralizing work. You see, he gets puts himself in that position. What is it's really it makes it hard to work for for Laurent T. And then it's going to be up to the judges whether they see if he's being too negative or if if, if, it's, if the good work he did at the beginning of the round is enough to carry it for him. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. All right, stop. Canelli says he's not holding. Yeah, he's not holding. He's got both hands on top of. Of, of Laurent T's okay, back. Sam, the referee, stop. Sam Virgin said, hey, stop holding. He goes, I'm not holding. Go. Oh, big swing and a miss. Come on, guys, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Fight it out, let's go. Oh, right off the break. Good jab there by Canelli. Smash oh. looking to answer. Now it's, now it's, <laughs> look at Canelli picking go, up his go, own mouthpiece. He's like, let yo, you're go. not knocking my let teeth out. <laughs> He oh, saved his mouthpiece about three times, Polly. Oh, but he dropped it and he picked it back up. <laughs> Nelson, on the other hand, drops it. He's like, he doesn't care. Oh, big right hand there by Canelli. Canelli has landed some clean shots here in the fifth and final round. Smash working in the clinch. Let him go. Let him go. Under a minute. And, and it may be Smash's inability to get uh, clean shots in that may make a difference in this final round. Canelli's landed some cleaner shots here. A lot of them, Polly. The, right there, three or four more. Despite the fact that it's been Nelson pressuring, but it, it may, it may be enough for Canelli with those cleaner shots. Over here. Oh, no point. Wow, that and could that, seal the deal. And, and Canelli's mad, but again, look what every time he's getting close, Ron Nelson gets close, what happens? He puts his head all the way down at, by the crotch of, of Ron T. Nelson. And it was the grabbing of the leg that really made yeah. the difference. Yeah, there you, is, yep. There again, he's, now he's trying not to wrap his, his hands around, but again, it, 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 I can understand what he's doing. It's, he's trying to make it negative work. We're basically neutralizing, and, and there's no advantage from either side. But on, eventually you do it so much that you, you, it becomes Come a on, negative John, impact go. on the fight. And then and, and, and the judges and ref realize that you're just trying to be a non, it's a non-starter for, for an exchange or, or for just creating action. Do I even say that Canelli was potentially winning the round, lost a point in 9-9? Yeah. Yeah, we, we might have a 9-9, nine -nine. we might still have a draw. Yeah. Canelli may go home saying, you know, it might be home cooking from the, uh, in the U.S., but I think he did it a little bit to himself, too, under the rule set. I mean, it, this was, it was, was part for the course, you know. He wasn't really allowed to be holding like that and, right. and, 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 and in a negative way. You're allowed to hold and hit in this. But, but not the, around the lot legs. Of the clinching that, that Canelli was doing was in, neg in a negative way to halt the action, to, to slow down everything. And in some ways it was smart, but then in some other ways it became too obvious. Early in the round, he had some good advantages here. Not all those actually landed as cleanly as we thought originally, but still, nonetheless, a good salvo for uh, for Canelli. There's a good jab. That was it was those little sneak shots that were really pretty effective there. And that was and a again. nice little sharp right hand by Canelli. That might have been the best shot of the round that he landed. The early salvo in the beginning of the round, which I thought was actually big shots, most of those actually missed. I didn't realize. Close round though, man. We might have it 9-9, Goldie. I don't know, which means we'd have to fight a draw. 
That's what I'm thinking, Paulie, because Canelli came out and landed the cleaner <laughs> shots. <laughs> When the points were deducted, it was when Canelli yeah. took the lower body Woo. of his opponent, got below the hips, and got on the leg of Laurent T. Smash Nelson. And then was penalized not once, but twice for holding. But if you do the math, we may very well need to see this one run back. So you want to be a bare knuckle fighter. So, so you think? Yes. Now watch it again. You'll see the hold of the leg, Pauly. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It's even afterwards. He tried. He, he did it once. Even after. There it is. He's got his, his arm around his, his hamstring. <laughs> now what that does is it prevents Smash from, you know, planting into a boxing position. It keeps his legs squared. And by keeping Smash's legs squared, he's not able to, you know, gain any leverage. So meantime, if you don't if you don't hold his leg forward, he can kind of put one leg back behind the other and get into a fight position and, and, and generate leverage. So did we get a 9-9? What will the judges render? Scorecards are in. Here is Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, after five full championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Judge Eliseo Rodriguez sees the contest 47 to 45, Nelson. While judges Lorenzo Toledo and Christopher Edgehill sees the contest 46 to 46, making the results of this championship bout a majority draw. Look at this gesture. Look at that. They're going to share it. Hey, man. Ladies you know and gentlemen, I, I'm going to come to both them. guys. I love that too. Great. That too. Especially after the bad blood. Great yesterday. show of respect are, between these respect. two. Yeah. An ocean separates them. I'm going to come to James Kennelly first, man. First off, welcome to the States. Great fight. What a war. How do you feel? I feel, I feel great, but I did think I got the win there. But with respect to Nelson, tough, tough man. Uh, yeah, I believe I won, but you know, it is what it is, you know. Thank you for everyone here. Thank you for having me, everyone. Really appreciate this. Thank you. Now, first time fighting in the Trigon. What did you think about fighting in such a close quarter? Do you know what? It's not small. If you know how to box a little bit, you can use it to your advantage, but to be honest with you, I was pretty surprised coming over here how big it actually is, isn't it? It is big, especially when you've got three people. You've got to be the first one ever to <laughs> say that. I don't mind it at all, you know. But I will say this, I'll only ever fight BYB over in the States, you know. I wouldn't do it in that small ring that's in the UK, you know. Now, a majority draw on the championship out. Rematch, possibly. Do you want to run it back? Of course, we'd have to run it back one way. we a fight like that, we'd be in the draw. You know, and all respect to Nelson as well, you know what I mean? Hard as nails, you know. Big respect to him, man. Well, great fight, James Canelli. Thank you so much for coming across. Ladies and gentlemen, James Canelli. All right, LT. Man, I've interviewed you so many times at this point, I don't even know what questions. You got a favorite color? I don't... Yeah, I don't know, man. Just... How do you feel? What, a, what an amazing war. You came out to battle. Some point deductions here and there, some big shots. But once again, you put on a show. Yeah, it was a good fight, man. Uh, power to James. He uh, threw down, brought, brought the brought the show. We did this for the crowd, man. We always fight for the crowd, you know. So sucks about, uh, you know, both probably both probably unhappy about the decision, but at the same time, uh, it is what it is, man. Live to fight another day, you know. Now you have a couple big rematches on the horizon. It seems like you go into some great wars. First off, do you want to run it back against James Canelli, decide a true champion? Yeah, for sure, man. I want that belt. Uh, I deserve that belt. One of these days, uh, the judges will be on my side. Anything you have to say to your friends and family that support you? Man, just love to everyone, love to the fans. Come here for me or anyone else. We appreciate y'all, y'all the best. We do this shit for y'all, so I appreciate you guys. 
Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner, LT, or sorry, majority draw for this competitor. One more time for LT Smash Nelson. Sam Liera to fight in our main event. He was told that he's the face of bare knuckle and every Brit wants him. And Sam said, I thought everybody wanted Smash. And you can see the great mutual respect at the end of this fight. And this is why people talk about combat and they forget boxing, even the bare knuckle, the oldest form, Paulie, is a martial art. Oh, yes, yeah. sir, no, sir, respect. respect, and that's what it's all about. So big props to James Kennelly, Laurent T. Nelson. We hope they will do it again. All right, one non-title fight and then our co-main and main event. So coming up next, a cruiserweight battle. Boss Hog is back, and he will welcome a very well-versed amateur, successful amateur boxer in Jordan Fuentes to professional bare knuckle. Welcome back to BYB 19. We are in the Pines. Three fights remain. Two will be six rounders for championships. And again, let's revisit the new rules just sanctioned by the Association of Boxing Council. Fighters cannot use the glove or sleeve. And this is the key, number three. Pro debut fights for both men and women are a maximum of eight minutes. So this fight coming up will be scheduled for four two-minute rounds. Now you can have a professional fight in Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and any form of combat, but if you have no pro experience like Fuentes, the Cuban crocodile, means you gotta break in slowly, as he will do tonight. A fight scheduled for four two-minute rounds. Our tail of the tape for this cruiserweight matchup. Johnson, 44 years old, 14 years the elder of his opponent, the Cuban crocodile, Brandon Bossog Johnson, will have a four inch reach advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is scheduled for four two minute rounds in the cruiserweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon. Brandon Johnson! Hold up, man. He's about to go down, boss. Oh. 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 All praise to the most high. Boss Hog Johnson, always ready for a brawl. He did say the Cubans, they're great at wrestling, they're great at judo, and they can box. Works 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Thursday, and then straight to the gym, never misses a workout. Fighting out of Portage, Indiana, Born and raised in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Just fought in MMA for the LFA. Ed Suarez doing a great job over the years. Said his body felt tired with MMA, but his body is still ready to go even you can't foreshadow this much, but he said, I'll be 45 in January. Yeah, it's hard to foreshadow yeah. anything once you're at 45 yeah, years old. I mean, and, and I'll be 62 in about four years. Like, boss, you got, you got, it's got to be within a couple of weeks. But nonetheless, Brandon Johnson, 44 years old, is back once again. He has been stopped just twice in his entire combat career. Both of those were in short notice fights. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, please welcome to the Trigon, Jordan Fuentes. <laughs> 
So the Cuban crocodile, at least he said he was a crocodile hunter back home in Cuba. Could hunt some alligators here. Yeah, I guess that means uh, inside here, he's not, he's not gonna be he's not gonna be worried about Brandon Johnson. <laughs> here with alligators. Fighting out of Miami, born and raised in Cuba, Jordan Fuentes. Amateur boxing, he earned a bronze medal in the Cuban provincial competition. Trains with Desmond Green, with Jomi Escobozo. Jomi Escobozo, Desmond Green, Domingo Lopez in the corner of Jordan Fuentes, as he is set to fight that man, Brandon Johnson. Escobosa in the corner, too. Look at him. There, Jomi's in the house. There he is. All right, official introductions once again, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this cruiserweight contest is scheduled for four two-minute rounds, and it's brought to you by GC3, live on BN Sports. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Bobby Wambacher. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold and purple trim. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 202 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of two victories versus two defeats. And he fights out of Portage, Indiana, by way of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Boss Hog Johnson. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim. He stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 205.4 pounds. He is making his bare knuckle debut, and he fights out of Miami, Florida, by way of Isla de Juventud, Cuba. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan, the Cuban crocodile, Fuente. Johnson scheduled for four two-minute rounds, and they come out swinging. Man, did they have a... Brandon Johnson. He's got the purple trunks, Fuentes. The problem is, is, is Johnson conditioned for this kind of pace, though? There you go. Oh, my goodness. Little clinch work. I just said that Johnson's only been stopped twice in his entire combat career. That number might change. Yeah, the pace of this fight, he's already not looking good. And also the pace is kind of heavy for a guy his age. He's fighting though. He always does, but Fuentes is bringing it. Stop, stop, stop. Jomi Escoboza. Gave us a look and he pointed at him. He said, hey, this kid can fight. Oh. And Fuentes not slowing down the pace too as both guys kind of started a bit too fast. Oh, big guard hand there by Fuentes. Johnson taking it well. Stop, stop. Separate, guys. Step back. Fight. Knockout of the night may still be on the table. <laughs> and just as you say, yeah, Johnson goes down. Yeah. Two minute rounds, remember. All right, fight! Jordan Fuentes. Oh, boom! What a shot! Boss Hog is one what? tough dude. Two-minute round became a huge factor right there. For the veteran, not for, yes. the, not for the rookie. Yep. Oh, we 
prepared for that, that two minute round thing, you know? Yeah. Because, because you end up fighting a guy who has the experience. I mean, he doesn't need two minute rounds. But in this case, you ended up on Johnson. Right. He's done three minute rounds before. Knockdown shot there by Fuentes. What a well, well turned over Let's punch. Go. Let's go. Let's go. This one may not last much longer, Paulie. <laughs> Round number two. Boss Hog still wants to bring it. More shots from Fuentes. Big right hand. Again, I don't know if Johnson can deal with this pace. Again, at this age, he already doesn't look the worst for wear. He looks the worst for wear. We know he's a warrior. No surprise he's going to try to continue. Fuente's going to try to finish it right here, right now. Just missed with the uppercut. Oh, catch and shoot. Which is not easy to do with Ben Huckles. Man, Fuentes really showing the repertoire here. Good skills. He's trying to overwhelm Johnson stop, now. Stop, stop, separate. He's in the ropes. Turn around. Fight! 50 seconds on the clock, round two. What a debut for oh, your Don Fuentes. Right Big right hand. Counter over the top. As Hog Buzz Hog threw a lazy right hand of his own. And Fuentes came with a sharp one. 30 seconds. <laughs> Buzz Hog still wants to fight. I did call check Congo Pat Berry. Yeah. We need that Pat Berry had finished Congo and Congo right. came back. We got a two minute round that's helping Boss Hog again, most likely. For sure. I don't know what Menza Genius came up with that rule about, <laughs> uh, about the fact that just because it's your first time fighting in, in the Baron Alpha, you have to do two minutes the first time. But certainly somebody who must rank high up there in the Menza school, for sure. <laughs> I mean, has to be. As you can see here, it ends up being the veteran that needs the two minutes, not the, not the guy you just got here. Without Absolutely a doubt. Absolutely useless rule. The battle continues round number three. The Cuban looking to crush the spirit of Boss Hog. And he's doing it. Four, Boss Hog's too brave for his own good, man. I mean, at his age, somebody should stop the fight in his corner. Come on. This guy's got big guts, big heart. I'm showing it time and again, he's got character. I mean, Oh, straight right hand. Because he's not just dealing with a more skilled fighter, he's also dealing with the, the, the energy of youth yes. as well. And it just, he just doesn't have that explosiveness like Fuentes does, you know? The fact that he's still in this fight is crazy, Pauly. Yeah. And he's, he's just strictly on, on character and heart, but sometimes, you know, you got to protect guys from themselves. Which is what we were talking about that Canelli said about Laurent T. Smash Nelson. Yeah. I don't even know if Brandon's landed anything clean. 
Nah, you can, I mean, with bare knuckles, they, they mark up, they mark your face up quick. I mean, you can see that nothing clean yeah. has landed. Matter of fact, nothing may have landed because really, partially landed shots sometimes cut you worse in bare knuckle. Fuentes looks the same as he did when he entered the Trigon for the first time. Round three, 30 seconds on the clock. And also, in reality, the two minute rounds is actually hurting Johnson because if this was three minute rounds, this fight would have probably got stopped already and he would have been able to stop taking this punishment. But again, the men's a genius taking him up with his two minute rule. Now he's keeping this guy in the fight and he's probably going to get out of another round. Which extends the punishment. Yes. But fighter safety paramount, needless to say, Polly. But it also it, leaves time that, for one that, big shot. But this is also proving that that that, that, that it's not about safety because it's extends prolonging the beating. Right. So if, if it's about safety, it's about, it's strictly on on a basis of opinion. Just clean landings, uppercut, straight right, just swarming Boss Hawk. Jordan Fuentes is for real. Fourth and final round, two minutes remain. Johnson is going to look for the Kirk Gibson. You age us, Goldie. You yeah, I know. Us. I know. Oh, big shots again. Two big, big two shots landed by Fuentes, and Johnson is getting knocked out of the trigon here. I mean, Johnson's just on automatic Six. pilot trying to get up. Seven. Eight. You want to continue, Brandon? Watch what you I'll tell you, this fight is a, is a. It is all over. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good job by Bobby Wambacher and by Boss Hog. Maybe even a little longer than it should have been, Pauly, but... But it's not on Wambacher, it's up to the corner. And also, you see Boss Hog tapping the, the back of, of, of uh, Wambacher, basically agreeing, hey, you know what, I, I agree yeah. to stop it. Oh, and Bobby was looking at him like, hey. And Johnson was just looking for somebody to rescue him out of the fight, because he's not going to quit himself. It's not in his character. Exactly. And that, that's the thing, man. You know, you, you put him in a position where, because of these two-minute rounds, he kept getting out of the rounds, and then the rounds starts again, and the beating starts all over again, and nobody's thinking about stopping You know, it's, I don't know, man. Totally. This was a, this fight was an exhibit in why that rule is so pointless and why they should just get rid of it before they, they, they continue to let this mishmash can happen. Well, we know one thing. The next time Fuentes fights, it won't be four by two. No, It'll no. be five by three. Oh, yeah. Emotional in victory here tonight in South Florida. The Cuban crocodile calls Miami home, and he earns a victory over Boss Hog, finishing him in the fourth and final round. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Wambacher calls a stop to this contest at 34 seconds of the fourth and final round. Declaring your winner by TKO and now undefeated, Yorda, the Cuban Crocodile Fuentes. Can't wait to see that young man return into the mighty Trigon, and again, nothing but huge props and respect for 44-year-old Brandon Boss Hog Johnson. Jordan Fuentes, victorious.
in his bare knuckle boxing, in his BYB, in his professional fighting debut. Still to come, our co-main event and our main event of the evening, both with titles on the line. First up, it is none other than Andre Yule against Carlos Alexandre. This one scheduled for six. This one for the BYB Welterweight Championship of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Before we go to our championship co-main event, as the sport of bare knuckle grows, we want to thank some people that have joined us in the arena to come tonight. I'm going to start first and foremost with just overall fighting legend. He's the true story behind the movie Bloodsport, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Deuce. I want to thank the innovator of the Trigon, Mr. Donna 5000, who came out tonight. NBA superstar and player for the Miami Heat, Josh Richardson, is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. And our most important guests, all of you Bare Knuckle fans, thank you so much for coming out tonight, Pembroke Pines. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to our championship co-main event. Six three-minute rounds for the BYB Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the Trigon, Andre Yule. Great crowd tonight, Andre Dragon Fist Yule. Riverside, California. Gonna fight for the BYB Welterweight Championship. Always ready for a brawl, he told us. His coach doesn't want him to get into brawls, but it seems he just can't help it. If it's gonna get dirty, he said, I'm ready to get dirty. Of course, the Garcias, famous with the gloves in Riverside, California. Andre loves to throw hands, and he is ready to take out the Brazilian, who he said is very tough. He said he has nothing but respect for Carlos Alexandre, but he is standing in the way of a championship here tonight. Andre Dragon Fist Yule wants to leave with the BYB welterweight championship belt. And of course, he's a huge Paulie Molinaji fan. <laughs> and his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome to the Trigon, Carlos Alejandre. Avisa aí, avisa aí que o homem do swing chegou, bebê. Se é Rodrigo Romoretti. Ela é toda marretinha, gosta de ter condição. Pega o peito, quer carinho, boa, boa, boa. Carlos Alexandre. His four bare knuckle bouts have been at 154, 155, 155, and 168. Tonight, he fights for the welterweight belt at 145 pounds. Guided by Jeremiah Rodriguez, Futures MMA, Carlos Guada, Pablo Caballero, and many other great fighters. His greatest influences, his grandmother, and his daughter. 
Paulie talked about it at the top of the show. Very long and lean. Extremely dangerous Brazilian from the capital, Brasilia, Brazil. Now fighting out of Cape Coral. You know, I, I do have to say, Paulie, that my wife would understand the lyrics of this song. Yeah, it is a I was thinking that too. <laughs> not, not us, unfortunately. <laughs> Big weight drop for Carlos Alexandre after some time off. Down 43 pounds, lost a kilo a day. And Basic said, when you're at home in Brazil, the food is so good, it's hard to stay disciplined. But he got to the weight, and he is ready to fight for the belt. He is Mistoka Carlos Alexandre with the official introductions of this title fight, Big Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your championship co-main event of the evening, live on BN Sports. Six three-minute rounds for the BYB welterweight championship of the world. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks, he stands five feet, 10 and one half inches tall. He weighed in at 144.4 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated professional bare knuckle record of one victory versus no defeats. And he fights out of Moreno Valley, California, Andre. His opponent fighting out of the red corner wearing the white trunks with black trim he stands five feet ten inches tall he weighed in at 144.6 pounds he comes to us with a bare knuckle record of three victories versus one defeat and he fights out of cape coral florida by way of brasilia brazil ladies and gentlemen carlos misto Sam Burgos. Our tail of the tape for this welterweight championship fight. Andre Yule, 35 years old. Carlos Alexandre, 33 years old. Everything else is virtually identical. Here we go. The Southpaw, Andre Yule in the black trunks. Black and white trunks for the Brazilian, Carlos Alexandre. He said that left lefty righty matchup as well. Yep. So Alexandre with that lanky frame. Battle of that outside foot, right, Paulie? Oh, yeah. Andre Yule trains with Bobby Keen Green, coming off a win over Tony Ferguson. And Futures MMA, Jeremiah Rodriguez, always trains quality fighters. Yule trying to extend that big left hand, just miss. Oh, there, lands it there. He's run out of room in the trigon real quick. Alexandre, close to the ropes. Didn't have any room to back up. And that left hand lands square for Yule. Yule said, I have a great cross, and I've gotten better at setting it up. Yeah, but goes up to the gut there as well with the same cross. Mistoka looking to get on the board here against the Southpaw. Alexandre competed on season four of the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. 2015 as Carlos Costa. Brazilians have eight or nine names. Yeah, I've, I've noticed from my, my soccer watching. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Pus Pele, Edson do Nascimento. Yes. Santos or something like that. Ronaldo from Brazil was Ronaldo Luis Nazario da Lima. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> A yes. lot of names. 
And then just give me Anderson Silva. And then they just, then, then some of them just go by one name. <laughs> a lot of soccer players, you know? Like Pele. Or Shogun. Yeah. Which, of course, isn't his name, but it's Mauricio Hua. Yeah. Oof. Or Pele. Yeah, yeah. No, there was a there was a footballer from Brazil in the past decades, a few decades ago. That was a couple of decades ago. That was uh, named Hulk. That That's right. Name. Yep. Every now now it's Mistoka. Yeah. Now in the last 10, 15 years. There's now a it's tactical fight here. Yeah, Alexandre against Andre. Carlos Alexandre against Andre Yule. Six round title fight. Quick hands from oh. Alexandre. Big counter from Yule. Tell you, good chin on the part of, of Ale Alexandre. He got hit square in the mouth a couple times. There's blood coming out of his mouth. That left cross of Yule. They were, they were flying well. around the triangle. You see the blood coming out of the mouth. Alexandre had two square landing left crosses. He's on wobbly legs going back to the corner. Where's the Not taking the, the stool. Espina. Neither fighter taking the stool. Yeah. That left hand right there. That was, I think, earlier in the round. Then as the round went on again, he gets more, some more successes. You will pump up the numbers on the combinations and started to get some of those shots through. The counter there, both big shot there as you were throwing punches, as uh, Alexandre throwing punches, but staying too high up. And you will make some pay getting underneath and coming up with huge crosses. Round number two, our co-main event of the evening, Carlos Alexandre. The white and black trunks, black trunks for Andre Ewell. Six rounder for the welterweight title. Ewell's debut lasted 17 seconds. Some of the shots he's throwing in this fight, he's trying to make it less short here as well. Yes. Well, Andre's taking some good ones though. Showing a good chin. So far, it's been Yule who has connected more frequently. A lot of ups and downs in this fight. A lot of gets tactical in some spots, and yep. then in some spots it explodes. It's, it's the kind of fight it goes down to zero, and then it goes up to 100 real quick and goes back down to zero in spots. Well, when asked his fight style, Andre Yule said, awkward and smooth. Yeah, I, I can see it. Yeah, I, I can actually, I can see that, where, where that he can make those descriptions. A lot of fainting, a lot of herky-jerky, and Alexander trying to figure it out again. Alexander going straight back too high, although Alexander fired back some good shots there, Yule knocking him off. Alexander's got to be careful when he backs up, though. First fight in 385 days for Carlos Alexandre, and that was in London for BKB as he represented BYB there. Last time he was in the Trigon, one year, four months, and 30 days ago. Trying to use that long jab, just missed. Now it is Alexandre showing the southpaw stance. And, and you will go unorthodox. Yep. Oh, good shots there by Alexandre. He starts to penetrate now. He throws straight punches, doesn't he, Paul? Yeah, and he's got that lanky frame, as we talked about earlier in the show. And that's what kind of makes it work for him on the outside. I think Ewell has lost a little bit of confidence as being hurt earlier in the round, right? He's not, not, as, not as, a, as enthusiastic about trying to explode back in as he was earlier in the fight. I was thinking the same thing, partner. Come on, let him go. Come on, come on. Let's go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Get down. 
Rich a good shot in the mouth will do that, right? Goldie, yeah, right? That, yeah. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched, right? Then the plan That'll take a little enthusiasm away. Yeah. Oh. Back and forth return of fire. Andre Yule, the big Superman fan, Roy Jones Jr., the nine-time world champion in the Hall of Famer. Also, as I mentioned, he loves Pauli Molinaggi, except when years ago, I guess you said Manny Pacquiao had no footwork. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, it, and Andre said it hurt his feelings, but he still loves you, though, Magic Man. Oh, right. and, he, and he did say that exactly in the quote. That hurt me. Oh, oh is it poking the eye here? Ah, we don't need that again. Accidental. The battle continues. Round number three. The new rules call a championship fight a six rounder. Not a seven rounder will exist anymore. So six round title fight, welterweight champion will be either Yule or Alexandre or neither if we get some more craziness tonight. Little bloodied under the right eye. Alexandre starting to connect more and they keep switching up their stances. Yeah. Yule goes orthodox. Alexandre goes southpaw. Alexandre slowly creeping himself back into the fight, though. Yes. And early on, it was uh, the explosiveness of Yule that was really carrying the day. But little by little, Alexandre succeeded in making Yule a bit more uncomfortable. The shot there by Yule on the inside of the exchange jab, but Yule got the better of it. And, and Alexandre. Uh, Alexandre got the better of the shot. In the trigon with the distance with Desmond Green. And Desmond Green is as dangerous as they come. In fact, the body style, the attack of Fondre Yule is similar to that of the Predator. Good return fire from the Brazilian. Just past the midway point of round three. Black trunks for Yule, white and black for Mastoka, Carlos Alexandre. And a little sloppier as the fatigue starts to set in, Goldie. Yes. So Jeremiah Rodriguez speaks Spanish and Portuguese, it sounds like, from the corner. Yeah, he's mainly, he's, he's mainly yelling in Spanish, and I can understand. Which, which most Brazilians can understand. I struggle with English. You're the one who speaks like five languages, Magic Man. <laughs> uh, just, just a few. Okay, four. <laughs> All right, talked about the love of Superman from Yule. Now the showman right now is Alexandre. Yeah, again, this is a fight. He goes to zero to 100, back to zero, back to 100. Yep. And a lot of posing in between some big exchanges. But as he gets more and more fatigued and more as the fight goes on, the more guys, the guys get more fatigued, the explosiveness just becomes a bit more sloppiness on the inside. Wait, stop. Let him go. Let him go. Come on, guys. the bell. Mistoka, Mistoka looks a little bit more confused, more, uh, not confused, confident. He's a more confident as he's bringing more pressure to Yule and he's starting to show blood a little bit more. I think he feels Yule maybe fading a little bit. Let's see in round four how things are going to play out. And the size of Alexandre. As I mentioned, he's fought at 54, 55, 55 minutes. Bare knuckle debut at 168. <laughs> Bigger frame. Hey, hey. Some of that, that shot from Alexander, which knocked Yule back. That was the shot that kind of changed the mentality a little bit about, about, about Yule. Championship fight. 
fight continues. Ty, Ty, over here. Come on, get that water. Come on, guys. Some water in the corner, they gotta clean over up. Here, over here, over here, over here. Over here, over here. All right, let's go. Get back in, gentlemen. I'm in. Round number four, co main event of the evening. Scheduled for six. Welterweight championship fight. Still to come, our main event of the evening for the super middleweight championship. The champion against the interim champion. You were trying to do his best now to back up me. Uh, Alexandre a little bit, trying to take back control of the trigon, because it seems in the last couple of rounds, it's been Alexandre who's kind of taking control of the center trigon and, and sort of carried, it, carried the pace of the fight, on, at nice least. Clean. Come on, let him go. Come on, break it up. Let's go. Nice and clean. Let him go. Let's go, Red. Let's go. Stop. But that enthusiasm, that explosiveness of Yule that we saw early in the fight has definitely dissipated, like you said, Magic Man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's slowly been, like, kind of drained out of him, you know? But there's still not a definitive advantage. A good counter there by Alexander, but you see little by little, you can see Alexander just landing subtly better shots, and, it, and it's affecting the body language of, of, of Yule. Like you go, said the enthusiasm isn't go, there go, as much go, with the explosive shots he was throwing ah. earlier. But he was really cut it closing the gap really fast with the fast feet. And yeah. Alexandre, a natural orthodox fighter, but he does tend to switch, as we've seen tonight, more often than some other fighters. Although it seems to be the trend nowadays. And he's, he's just more consistent. Yule is like, yeah. is a, Yule will look like he's fading and then he'll come up with a, a big salvo or at least a, attempt a big salvo. While Alexander slowly, slowly but surely just making the consistent work start to pay off, start to break Yule down a little bit. Alexandre was to fight a few months ago in Dubai. His opponent fell away. Tonight, he fights for the belt. Here in his new backyard, South Florida. Oh, good shot there by Yule. There's that big left hand that he's been looking for. But you see, when you're fatigued, it doesn't have as much of an effect. And yes. Alexandre comes right back, lands a couple of shots of his own, and it's Yule who's backing up now. And that, 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 that stands out in the eyes of the judges, you know? Absolutely. And again, another big counter uppercut. That's a good counter uppercut. Now we've got his attention. I think Yule's hurting that counter uppercut. Goldie, he's holding on here. That was a sharp, well-timed counter uppercut by Yule. I mean, by Alexandre on Yule. And again, speaking of killed enthusiasm, you see Yule is not really looking to engage right now. He's trying to kill time. He's up against the ropes. And long that punches role. again, Pauly, landing for Alexandre. Yep. You can just see Alexander is a veteran, you know? Like, yeah. little by little, he started out this time not to the most advantageous positions, and then little by little just started taking control more and more. And now you can just see he's sort of taking full control of this fight as we go into round five. Round number five, title fight scheduled for six. White and black trunks, Mistoka, Carlos Alexandre. Dragon Fist, Andre Yule in the black southpaw stance. Mistoka comes out orthodox to start this round. Oh, nice job with the jab. Parried and then fired. Oh, 
I talked about this fight at 145. Alexandre did spend his entire MMA career fighting at 145. This is the first time at 145 in his bare knuckle boxing career. He was trying to give it one effort. A little sloppy from the fatigue, but at least trying to give it that effort. But you can see Alexandre is just more in control of his balance, a little bit more in control of what he wants to do. But you was trying to push the envelope a little bit, knowing it's the last round, and maybe a big last round. It gets dropped there. What a shot. And there's a big lump on his lump on his forehead. Five, six, oh, championship seven, rounds, right? Big eight, lump on the forehead. Big lump. And it's that hematoma right, just continues to grow. Yeah, and I don't know and it's the straight punches of Alexandre Pauly. Yep. Big lanky frame. Yep. Oh, and you can see Yule. Yeah. The gas tank being emptied by the impact yeah, and of his opponent. And, and Goldie made a good point with the championship fight now. It's not about just seeing the distance here at the end of round five. You may not be able to do the sixth round. Yes. Let's see here. You see the energy of Yule falling. And of course, that's going to just make the, the, the confidence of, of Alexandre grow more. He sees a guy kind of fading. He's going to attack him more. The body language of Yule is not really there. Looking to finish it right here, right now. It is all over. It's the BYB welterweight world champion. Let's go, let's go. on the ref to see that, yes. recognize it, and, and make a timely stoppage. And of course, uh, Alexandre deservedly celebrating. O rei voltou, caralho! Congratulations to Mistoka. Carlos Alexandre claims the welterweight belt. And Paulie goes right up to the top of the show where you talked about the long frame. Yeah. And the utilization of that long frame by the Brazilian. Yeah, that's one thing that stuck out to me about Alexander when I was trying to remember what, how I, I had seen him the last times. And when I'd seen him, I'd say, I, I realized he was very adept at understanding his frame and understand, uh, adept at, at how to use that. You see the blood stains on the uh, camera for everybody at home. Take those to the dry cleaner with our clothes, right? Yeah, you got that right, Goldie. Viva Brazil! One of our proud founders, Dada 5000, ready to put the belt around the waist of Carlos Alexandre. Big Mo to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sam Burgos calls a stop to this contest at two minutes, nine seconds of round number five in this championship co-main event. Declaring your winner by TKO and the new BYB welterweight champion of the world, Mistoka Carlos Alexandre. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined here by Carlos Alexandre and his coach, Jeremiah Rodriguez. Carlos, first and foremost, congratulations. How does it feel to have gold around your waist? Primeiramente, eu queria agradecer a Deus. E antes de eu falar alguma coisa, eu queria chamar o Mike. Cadê o Mike? Mike, Muito obrigado pelo tratamento que você me dá nesse evento, por tornar esse sonho possível. Depois eu quero, depois você vai responder, eu quero te fazer dois pedidos apenas. Ok, ele disse que, primeiro de tudo, ele quer agradecer a Deus, ele também quer agradecer o Mike por ter cuidado dele, e o tratar bem e lhe dar a oportunidade de lutar, que ele ama o Mike e ele ama o BYB, e que ele gostaria de poder voltar e também desafiar para o belt se possível. Eu quero pedir a oportunidade de ter dois pedidos apenas para o leão que está adormecido, Sérgio Júnior, fazer a despedida dele nesse triângulo. E meu segundo pedido é fazer a luta que todo mundo quer. Eu, 
versus Demos 2. É, Lisânia, te amo. He said that um, he's been working really hard and that the only loss that he has is the Desmond, Desmond Green and that he would like at some point to have a rematch against him if possible. Carlos, you're a fighting champion. Is uh, something else? Oh, is there anything that you want to say to your friends and family that are watching tonight? Estou morrendo de saudade. Eu vou ficar aqui mais um tempo porque eu tenho uma super luta que eu acabei de pedir. E eu, quando eu terminar, eu quero voltar para casa um dia depois dessa luta. Obrigado pelo tratamento que o Ben Silva me dá, tratamento de um verdadeiro ídolo. He said that he's very grateful for the opportunity and that he wants to tell all his friends and family, especially his two daughters, because he spent a month and a half here training, that he misses them and he's ready to go back and see them with the belt. Well, a champion's going back to see him, ladies and gentlemen. One more time for your new BYB champion, Carlos Mistoca Alexandre. We'll be right back with our main event. Big congratulations to Carlos Alexandre finishing Andre Yule in round number five, Polly. Yep. To walk away with the BYB and Welterweight and World Championship. And, and done like a real veteran, you know, uh, didn't start out to fight too positively as Yule was very explosive, uh, ran, ran to the front early. But little by little, he really took that veteran approach to break down his opponent little by little, and you could start to see the, the momentum turning the tide in favor of Alexandre. And little by little, he was able to eventually get that stoppage. Very, very veteran-like performance, uh, workman-like performance by Carlos Alexandre, and, and uh, cerebral performance as well. Coming up next, it is our main event of the evening. The caveman Sam Liera is the interim super middleweight champion. The GOAT, Jose Fernandez is the champion coming back from major shoulder surgery. Our main event for the belt when we return. An anchor made out of bone, a stabilizer for two months. Jose Fernandez has a brand new shoulder, but he had to sleep in a recliner. He had to go through six months of therapy. He was green lighted in April of last year. He returns tonight to remind the world that he is none other than the GOAT. It is all over! Jose Fernandez is the BYB Super Middleweight Champion! Sam, Sam, Sam. Get ready, boy, get ready, because it's coming. The pain is coming. The war of this fight is coming. And I know you're gonna be ready. Like I said, I'm ready to lay it out all on the line. Because where he's tough, I'm tougher. You know, it's going to be a good match to see who really is number one. So th this isn't going to last long, you know. And if it does, I'm going to take him to deep waters and drown him. Simple as that. Oof, Jose Fernandez, some fighting words. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the main event of the evening. Six three-minute rounds for the undisputed BYB Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Live on BN Sports from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is the interim champion. Please welcome to the Trigon, Sam Liera.
caveman. He is Sam Liera. And he is one tough dude. Five and oh. All of his victories coming inside the Trigon. And his opponent, the champion, fighting out of the red corner. Here is Jose Fernandez. Jose Fernandez was very protective of his shoulder. He, he felt it starting to be tweaked, and he actually blew it out training for a fight previously scheduled against the man he fights here tonight for the undisputed super middleweight championship as he fights Sam Liera. March 12th of 2022 to August 10th of 2023, 517 days, one year, four months, 30 days, the GOAT is back. This is our main event. It is scheduled for six three-minute rounds. It is for the Super Middleweight Championship. With the official introductions, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Six three-minute rounds for the undisputed BYB Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Miami Lux Detail Supply, live on BN Sports. So, Wearing the black trunks with white trim, he stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 164.6 pounds. He comes to us with a perfect, undefeated, professional, bare knuckle record of five victories versus no defeats. And he fights out of Fullerton, California. Introducing the interim BYB Super Middleweight Champion, Sam Liera! And his opponent, making his long anticipated return to the mighty Trigon, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim, he stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 163.2 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of three victories versus no defeats. And he fights out of Westchester, Miami, Florida. Introducing the current reigning, defending BYB Super Middleweight Champion. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event right, of gentlemen. the evening. Fernandez, 34, five years younger than Liera. Three inch reach advantage, Sam Liera, two inches taller. 
The winner leaves the undisputed super middleweight champion here in BYB. Here we go. Both men in black trunks. Jose Fernandez, red wraps. Sam Liera in the blue wraps. So Fernandez in the in the, in the uh, preview before the the fight in the promo we were showing, he's saying, you know, he's he's tough. You know, Sam's tough, but he's tough too. Yep. I think it's gonna come down to more than toughness in this fight. Both guys are tough. Vieira has a lot of versatility to his style. It's gonna see. I'm curious to see if Fernandez can match that versatility of the style of Vieira because both guys are undoubtedly tough, or they wouldn't be at this level. And I have given Sam his nickname back. I know he took the caveman out for a while, so he was the artist formerly known as the caveman. He's still Sam the Caveman Liera. Yeah, he's, he's willing to go and throw his trenches. I mean, but uh, but again, who, who's to say Fernandez is not? It's just we that fight with with uh, Laurent T. Nelson and, and Liera. Oh, big shot there. And that's what I mean about the versatility. Yep, the shot selection of Liera is always very tricky. Five, six, seven, eight. Fernandez, three and zero. Oh. Became the first BYB super middleweight champion, defeating J.D. Burns in round number four at BYB 9, March of 2022. It was shortly thereafter that the rest of the shoulder ripped away. Fernandez facing Liera. Champion against interim champion, and a good start for Sam Liera. Yeah, he's starting to find a home with that right hand. He landed another one a few seconds back. Also, you can see that right, mental stop. pressure he's applying to Fernandez. Physical yes. on the inside, right. but also from the outside, he's driving, he's, he's slowly driving Fernandez back without even really doing a lot. He's just making him feel like he's got in control of the trigon. There he is again, Fernandez, up against the corner, up against the ropes, and it's Liera just kind of moving him, maneuvering him there without even having to, be physical, to physically do it. Fernandez has to be a little bit more deceptive with that entrance with that left hand because Liera's looking for a right hand over the top. And watch for that big overhand right. That is the GOAT's go-to oh, punch. Yeah. And he's down again. Sam Liera off to a spectacular start. And this is why I was saying it's going to come down to more than toughness here. Yes. And there's time away. I, say what you will. Yeah. There's time away. Bring less matters. And in that time away, you know, Liera's been... You know, getting sharpening his teeth to fight to let that fight with Nelson and things, oh. like things of that nature, you know? Stop. Stop. He's been in the fire. Big first round for Liera, 10 7. Yes. First knockdown, second knockdown, 10-7, round one, Sam Liera. <laughs> round number two. Let's see if Fernandez can make any much needed adjustments. Tries to close the gap, go dirty boxing. But again, that's, Liera is very good at that as well. No question. That's one thing about Liera, he's kind, he's kind of a full package, you know, he's, he's got some good boxing on the outside, on the inside he's very, very difficult to deal with. And so his durability is second and yeah, nine. And so you never really get a big break, you know. You're, 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 mentally, you're always in a fight, whether you're on the inside or on the outside with Liera. There's it's, it's, it no moments in the fight where you can kind of let up a little bit and then catch your breath. After his first bare knuckle fight, he said he couldn't drive for three days. His hands hurt so badly. His eyes were swollen almost shut. 
in that crazy fight against Smash Nelson. It was a good left hook to, by 20, about 20 seconds ago by Fernandez, and I thought he did a good job. Instead of using the jab, which he had been using, he turned it into a hook. Although Liera goes right back to work, doesn't phase him. And since then, he's still ended a couple of good shots. And again, that overhand right a few seconds ago by Liera. Sam said, quite often I fight on idiocy. <laughs> we call it toughness. He said, hopefully I won't make dumb decisions, oh. go in there tough. And you see there's some swelling on the right cheek of, oh, nice little right hand, another big one too there by Liera. And Liera right turns his punches over yeah. so well. And the right cheek of, of Fernandez is showing you that. And also they're just zinging little shots. You see, again, shot selection, use the hook to set up the right hand. Uh -oh. And he got poked a little bit. A little bit, and those eyes have taken their share of damage. Yeah, got uh, poked in that right eye. He's got a little sneak, that's a little sneaky razor uppercut he throws. It's the second time I've seen him throw it. Just very explosive. And as you said, just multi-dimensional in his attack. Fernandez trying to land a big right, a much needed one. Oh, good body shot by Liera underneath that uppercut of, uppercut attempt of Fernandez. Main event of the evening, super middleweight championship fight. Oh, there's that high plum. Again, Liera gives you no breaks on the inside. None. 25 professional MMA fights for Sam Liera. And former Fernandez king of the cage welterweight champion. And Fernandez, you can see the frustration. He's just throwing flailing shots, mindless shots without thinking them over. You know what? You don't want to get into that kind of that kind of thinking against Liera because he'll continue to make you pay. He stays on that technical game plan. So if you go if you go away from the technical and just start to look for home run shots, it's gonna only cost you more. <laughs> Sam is on a very high level at 39 years old in the world of bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> Take a look at some of the handiwork, Paulie. Oh, oh yeah. perfect Big right shots hand. There. Big shots. And again. Oof. Oof. All Sam Liera so far. With the new rules. The unified rules of bare knuckle boxing by the ABC. Title fight, once again, we remind you, scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Two knockdowns in round number one for Liera. Round three, Sam Liera and the blue wraps, red wraps for the GOAT, Jose Fernandez. Oh, good uppercut on side by Fernandez, but again, uh, that overhand right by Liera. And, and the, the right eye of Sam Lier is still bothering him. I think he might have gotten poked accidentally again. And his eyes were nearly swollen oh, shut in that fight Come against on. Smash. Take a look at it, Pauly. Yeah, yeah, the right. open hand yeah. pushing in. A lot of open hands today. Yeah. And that was a hurt, man, you know? Oh. I mean, anybody who's moved in the eye knows that, but yeah, it'll bother you, man. And especially Liero, didn't he have to deal with that in the other fight as well? Oh, with, with yeah. Nelson yeah, there, yeah, absolutely. And you, it's, it, it's a dangerous thing, because the eyes are a very delicate part one of the point, of your are going to take a point. One point yep, one vote. point deduction, Jose Fernandez. With a show of class and respect, says, yep, my bad. Unintentional, but I made the mistake, and it cost me. Sam said it took him about nine days to fully open his eyes yeah. after that fight with Laurent T. Smash oh, Nelson. shot there by Fernandez as he drives Liera back. Now, one would think Fernandez is going to come on and, and go storming at Sam now. 
yeah, yeah. down on the scorecard so badly. A 10-7, now a point right, deduction right, right, right. here, Paulie. Yeah, of course. And also, you got a little bit of a break when you yes. catch his breath. Yep. We have seen Sam fight through <laughs> massive amounts of adversity. Oh, big uppercut there. And he connects with the knuckles and to the right eye of the goat, and that hurt him badly. That's that razor scraping uppercut I was talking about last round that he throws it in a sneaky way. And there, Fernandez kind of ducked right into it. He's trying to break Fernandez down, finish his fight midway through round number three. Fernandez running out of ideas. He's looking left, right, but he's in a defensive posture right now. Definitely the most talented opponent that Jose Fernandez Set. has faced. Step back. Fight. Interim champ against the champion who was sidelined oh, yeah. by injury. Big counter Liera shot. Liera continues to pour it on. As Fernandez left that right hand hanging out there when he threw it. Liera countered him and then followed it up with a combination. Liera would love to finish it right here, right now. 45 seconds, round three. Body, body, chin, down. He's finally beating down. Accumulation of damage. Yeah, and you can see now the body language of Fernandez starting to break a little bit. And that's it. It is all over! Just like that, Sam Liera is the BYB undisputed super middleweight champion. Dominant performance by Liera. Really a statement performance. Big time. And of course, you know, you got to keep in mind maybe some ring rust on the part of of uh, Fernandez as well. It definitely the, the layoff doesn't help you to be out all that time and then have to take on a, a guy of the caliber of the quality of, um, of uh, Sam Liera. No question about it. And, and that was something that you have so much respect for Jose Fernandez that you don't want to assume that could potentially be a problem, Paulie, but you could see it. Plus the fact Sam Liera is very, very dangerous, extremely versatile, mm -hmm. and he is now oh, yeah. the undisputed champion. And I tell you, one of the things that makes him uncomfortable is because he knows how to fight on the inside and the outside. There's yes. no break, you know? Yep. Sometimes you got a guy who knows how to fight on the inside, you keep him on the outside, you kind of got a break. You got to go on that guy who fight, knows how to fight on the outside, you get inside on him, you create clinches, you force no work inside, you got to get some kind of advantage or a break. With Liera, there's nowhere where he's weak. You know, he's relatively capable both on the inside and the outside. Actually, he's very capable on the inside and the outside. So, so you're gonna keep be working where, whether you're, no matter what part of, what real estate you choose to fight the, the fight at inside that Trigon. One-sided main event tonight. Big Mo to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Wambacher calls a stop to this contest at two minutes. 36 seconds of round number three. Declaring your winner by TKO. And now the undisputed BYB Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Sam Liera. Sam Liera is the undisputed Super Middleweight Champion. Amazing sign of respect. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by the new champion, Sam Liera. Sam, congratulations. New champion, still undefeated. What is it gonna take to stop you? I'm really curious at this point. Old age. <laughs> What's, well, I mean, What's that? I mean, every year you come out, another show, another show, another win, drag him out, fight. Nothing can stop you, man. And now you are the undisputed champion. How does it feel? You know what? It feels great. I know people are going to come out to me, you know, eventually we're at the top and we fall, but 
I'm trying to not lose that streak, so whoever's next, whatever, you know, come knock me off. You know, I respect whoever comes and steps in the case in the ring with me. You know, I must respect you no matter who you are. Now, I mean, I think at, at this at this moment, I think you have the most wins inside the Trigon. You are the king of the Trigon. Is the king going to defend that gold here soon? Yes, I'm planning to stay king for a while. So, you know, I'm really happy for it that I won the championship. I'm glad that I'm a champion. I don't count that as anything. You know, I was just uh, holding a bell for Jose until he got back. So I'm, I'm glad that he was here. And I give thanks to Mike and everybody for BYB, the opportunity, you know, for letting me be in here. I love it. I never thought I'd do it, but I love it. Dada, you invented the Trigon. Have you ever seen someone so dominant inside your creation like Sam Liera? He's a master technician. He came inside and he knows how to work the, work the angles. He's the veteran and he showed it tonight. Enough said. Sam, anything you want to say to your friends and family watching around the world? You know, thanks for watching me. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank my sponsors for supporting me. You know, Casa Fresh, the Sofa Key Podcast. Uh, we have LA Vape and uh, everybody from the Dance Center and uh, the, uh, uh, the Box Training Center. And I don't get anything right now, but everybody at Kessler's, uh, Rivera Sacos, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think Jose Connection. And I, my coach is Chris, and my friends Ramsey, Thaddeus, uh, my girlfriend, Mabrina, my brother, uh, uh, Snoy. Snoy. And the Cup Net, especially, you know, of course, the Cup Net. Everybody over here, I really appreciate it. And uh, the Primos, I really appreciate you guys for following me. And I'm hoping you enjoyed the fight today. Dottie, you got something else? Listen, all for that performance tonight, I just got to say, is there anyone that can stop Sam Liera? Well, in a very stacked super middleweight division, looks like you want a piece of Sam Liera, huh, Ryan Jeff? Yeah, let's get it on. Whatever they, whatever they want, you know. That's not up to you, whatever Mike says. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't mind. That's what you said last time. All right, let's get it then. I mean, there, there, there's a laundry list of people showing up in the ring. LT Nelson, you fought a few minutes ago. You had the fight of the year against Sam Lear. It's a super middleweight party up in here, LT, huh? Hey, you know, hey, Sam's a G. You guys know that you watch us fight, it's gonna be the best fight again you'll ever see. And it's going hey, down. man, fuck all that shit, bro. Right. Like I said. It's a super middleweight party in here, ladies. I don't, know, I don't know about this little dude, Ryan Jed. I don't even know who this fool is, but uh, he's gonna get his ass beat. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a whole lot of super middleweights in the Trigon right now. This ring isn't big enough for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to BYB19. Your new undisputed champion, Sam Liera. They are lining up to face off against the undisputed super middleweight champion, Sam Liera. Smash and the caveman had one of the greatest fights in BYB history, and we know how dangerous Ryan Jett is, and we know that Ryan likes to chat a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. As well, he yeah. is right now. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep division with some good fighters. I yep. mean, you saw three of them in that Trigon right now, you know, just, just a second ago. It's a, it's a fun division. Uh, I mean, they can only fight two at a time, though, so we gotta <laughs> figure out what the matchup is gonna be. And the people's champion, victorious tonight because he took that dude who came into the trigon <laughs> and he carried him out so well done isaac Kinonis, the people's champion and, and you know what whatever we see next is going to be another tremendous battle mm -hmm. and and paulie really what tonight was another example of is the continued growth of byb and how the hall of fame matchmaker mel valenzuela hand picks great fighters forget yeah. about and he just, fought here she yeah, fought there he gets the right it's not just great fighters it's the matchups that count as well yes. and mel that's what we mel brings us that 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 terrific matchmaking where the individual styles mesh together he knows how to match the fights and so that people the the, the, the byb fans can get the most entertainment out of the night fights uh, on byb and, and and tonight was no different I mean, we had some very entertaining scraps no question about it as team liera celebrates a big victory as he leaves with the undisputed super middleweight title to his name. We had nine fights in all, and not surprisingly, 
We had a fight of the night that happened to involve Laurent T. Smash Nelson you don't again. Say. You don't yeah. say, Goldie. Yeah, exactly, right? It was a draw, but there was no draw in anything other than the conclusion that this fight between Canelli and Nelson was the fight of the night. Yeah, yeah, and they went at it. I mean, a physically debilitating fight on the part of both guys. But like Canelli landed the better, cleaner shots. Uh, but I felt like Laurent T. Nelson made the fight more physical and then took advantage of the, of the moment to make it constantly physical and really start to wear down the mind and body of Canelli and then ultimately uh, ended up with the draw. Fight of the night goes to Smash and Canelli as BYB BKB collide once again inside the mighty Trigon. Knockout of the night, Viva Brazil. It goes to none other than Carlos Alexandre as he finishes Andre Yule. Yeah, and this was a, a, a nice performance by Alexandre because Yule started out the fight with the advantage, looked to be a little more explosive, but Alexandre's expert veteran experience slowly started carrying the day, or the night, should I say, and then little by little, eventually was able, able to take him out. So Alexandre with the knockout of the night and a great night inside the Trigon. We have the champions and the champions should be celebrated. Alexandre, of course, with the deal in Brandon Burr walks away as the first ever featherweight world champion. Oh yeah, that was that was another very good fight actually. Where the advantage in the be in the beginning was uh, was up was on McQueen, and little by little Burr started really toughing it out and yes. you started grinding down McQueen and little by little McQueen sort of, sort of started fading and of course the uh, eventually the, the eye pokes yeah. end, the, end of the fight. Unfortunate but Brandon Burr is the first and there can never be one other than the very first congratulations to the Buckeye Brandon Burr. Carlos Alexandre takes the belt in the welterweight division. Of course, Sam Liera is now undisputed at super middleweight. Oh, yeah, and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a tough one. And you know what? Going, even going into tonight, you knew that, you know, you, when you were going to see a, a Sam Liera fight, you're going to be entertained, and you're going to get a complete fight. And, and that's what Liera gives you. Inside, outside, he's entertained. And, and Smash just told me his next fight is tomorrow, just so you know. <laughs> Pauli Malinaji, the magic man, we always have a great time with you. Always bring a great action from the Trigon for our entire crew. It was a night with four belts on the line one will have to wait but the others were outstanding and how about levi costa you know what brazil was well represented here tonight brandon burr as we mentioned he is the first ever champion in his division and then we saw the battle for burr alexandre and nelson and many others putting on a show tonight. For my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Pauli Malinaji, Mike Goldberg saying so long until next time. We see you right back here inside the mighty Trigon.